Orange and black clad Oklahoma State fans are ready for their 10th home opener under Coach Mike Gundy. They're all excited to see transfer speedster Tyreek Hill, who dazzled last week against defending champion Florida State. Today they face FCS Missouri State, coming off a fine comeback win on the road at Northwestern State. The Cowboys and the Bears in Stillwater, next on Fox College Football. They call it beautiful Boone Pickens Stadium here in Stillwater, Oklahoma, where the Oklahoma State Cowboys play host to the Missouri State Bears. With it being the home opener, the silence ends for the famous paddle people here in Stillwater. Thanks for joining us for our triple header of Fox College football here on FSM. We're the middle game with Brian Baldinger. I'm Mark Falwell. And Brian, it is possible for a loss to energize a fan base. We learned that last week because Oklahoma State had a down-to-the-wire tussle with number one Florida State. And what's got everyone really enthused about this particular team, the blazing speed of newcomer to the program, Tyreek Hill. And Mark, I don't think you can coach speed. He has as much of it as anybody in the country. He's a special player to watch. He caught Florida State off guard. And you'll see him in all four phases of the game today as a returner at kickoff and punts, at receiving out of the backfield, and also running the football. He just simply outran Florida State. We can't wait to watch him in week two, game two here for Oklahoma State. And for the Missouri State Bears, they're led by the senior quarterback, Kiara Harris, who had a really nice game, a big comeback win against Northwestern State last week, the three touchdown passes. He's got to eliminate his mistakes today. He's got to handle the atmosphere, and he's got to make a couple of big plays for Missouri State and the Bears to stay in this one. The comeback for Missouri State last week saw them score the final 20 points of the game over the last 13 and a half minutes. Meanwhile, Oklahoma State is trying to make it 19 straight season openers with a victory. They host the Missouri State Bears, and the kickoff is coming up next on Fox College Football. The Oklahoma State Cowboys take the field for their home opener. Trying to make it 19 straight home openers with a victory. The opponent today is Missouri State. The streak started against the Missouri State Bears back in 1996. And the Bears take the field. They have never defeated Oklahoma State in six previous matchups. The Oklahoma State paddle people are warming up. Speaking of getting warm, Tyree Kill has gone through his paces before the game to get ready. And he'll drop back in deep to the goal line to return the opening kick. Missouri State won. They defer their options, so the Bears will kick off to the Cowboys. And I don't know if I would kick off to what I see is the fastest player in all of college football to start this game on the road. I'm not sure that this decision might not come back to haunt. We'll see if they're working on pooch kicks and all different kind of things to keep the ball away from this special explosive player. Well, Marcelo Bonani, not of Juventus and Serie A in the Italian <laughs> there league. You go. He is the kickoff man and place kicker for Missouri State, and he kicks it short, and it is scooped up off the bounce by Hill, and he has to run right out of bounds just beyond the 20-yard line to start the game. Well, Marcello Bonani just did a nice job of keeping it away from Tyreek Hill. That he did. Yeah. I mean, they, they limit the field position right here for the Cowboys to start. Last week, Hill had six kickoff returns for 140 yards. Not a chance to do anything there. And the Express Employment starting quarterback, the junior from Denton, Texas, J.W. Walsh, who threw for a touchdown, ran for two last week, 203 yards passing, 51 yards on the ground. That was a 37-31 loss to Florida State as the preseason number one was challenged in a season opener as much as any number one since Miami lost in 1990. At the 22-yard line, J.W. Walsh with four receivers. And the running back is Rennie Childs as Desmond Rowland has bruised ribs and a pass is caught on the right side. Jawan Seals is upended after the catch by Mike Crutcher at safety. Seals with his third catch of the year. And Oklahoma State can snap it as quickly as the center judge puts it down. And they do after the seven-yard pass play. Now on the left side. And the pass is caught. Marcel Eatman. Beyond the 30, spotted at the 33. That's enough for a first down. Two passes and a first down. Only the 10th start here for J.W. Walsh. Been in rotation his freshman and sophomore seasons here, but he's firmly entrenched 
as the starter right now. Tenth start as Baldy noted, but his 20th appearance. He's had 10 games where he's played off the bench. From the 33 on first down and another pass play. This is the play action. He's airing it out deep, looking down the middle of the field, and a flag is down. There is going to be a penalty here as Caleb Shafitzel is back deep in coverage against Brandon Shepard, the junior from St. Louis. Yeah, and you knew that the speed was going to test the back end of the Bears, and Shafitzel is their best player on defense. He simply just didn't find the ball in time before uh, the attended receiver Shepard was able to get to it. Randy Crystal is the referee yes, today. Defense, number 34. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Now you see Shafitzel here behind uh, Shepard and just blindly goes for the ball. I mean, he looked when Shepard looked, which is a good thing. He just hit him before he was allowed. Brian noted that Shafitzel is Missouri State's best defensive player, a first-team All-American in FCS last year and a preseason pick this year. Sweeping right. Tyree Kill trying to turn the corner, ran out of the tackle, scoots down the sideline. There's a marker down for a potential face mask penalty here on the tackle or on the first attempt at the initial yeah. tackle by Dylan Cole. And I think Tyree Kill just ran right through it. Ran right through. He lost his shoe. <laughs> <laughs> Speedsters can't run without their shoes. I've noticed that. That slows down the 200 meter. Yeah, it time. does slow them down a little bit. Missouri State facing their second penalty of the game. There are two fouls on the play. Personal foul, face mask, defense, chop block, offense number 75. The penalties offset. First down. Oklahoma State had seven penalties for 70 yards last week, and they would have been the beneficiary of Missouri State's second penalty today. But the chop block negates this face mask committed by Dylan Cole. And I saw Tyreek Hill before the game. He had a, a, a plastic face mask on because he thought about the rain. He didn't like it. He had it taken off right before the start of this game. Fortunately, the rain has let up after two and a quarter inches have fallen here in Stillwater since yesterday evening. Offsetting penalties, first and ten. A play fake, and Walsh throws in the right flat. It's caught. That Shepard fighting out of the tackle to the Bears' 40-yard line for a first down. 12 yards. I'm oh, sorry, Mark. Uh, one thing about J.W. Walsh, he's, a, he's an excellent athlete. He runs very well. He gets outside the pocket. He throws on the run well. Big part of his game. In motion on a fly sweep, Shepard just caught the pass. Now he'll run the ball and turn up field on first down inside the 35 of Missouri State. Well, there's a lot of new players here at Oklahoma State, and one of those players that's getting that chance is Brandon Shepard. Had two catches last week. And they've already thrown it his way a couple of times today, and they throw it his way on the right side. It sails over his head for an incompletion as we look at the Academy Sports Right Stuff key players of the game. Right, and so, you know, for Oklahoma State, certainly we're going to talk about Tyreek Hill, but Jawan Seals is a leading returning receiver from a year ago. Had a good game last week, and then Caleb Shafitzel, who we've mentioned already, a ball-hawking safety and a great tackler uh, for the Bears. Seals led Big 12 freshman last year in receiving yards on third down and a long four. It opens up for Walsh to scramble. 30-yard line, running out of bounds near the 20. First down, a third down conversion on the scramble by J.W. Walsh. Well, I mean, J.W. last week against the national champs ran 11 times for 65 yards and two touchdowns. Florida State had a hard time containing him. The Bears will have a hard time as well. Randy Childs is in the backfield. Walsh just ran for 15 yards. Now a broken play, and Walsh is unable to manufacture something out of that. Andrew Beisel, the tackle. Well, Paul Lewis is the center here. I mean, I th he snaps it way early. I've done this before. I almost thought that JW was underneath him. The ball hit him on the top end of his rear end, and it, it, he snapped it too quickly. It's a nice recovery by Walsh to save that play. Paul Lewis at center from Houston. This is his third career start today. Now Oklahoma State is in the diamond formation in the backfield and an inside handoff to Childs. Childs last week ran for 47 yards against Florida State. Jeremy Springer at linebacker for Missouri State on the stop. And we're talking about Childs early here because their starting running back, Desmond Rowland, is not going to play today. He's got bruised ribs or torn cartilage. Mike Gunny wasn't exactly sure, but they're going to rest him and probably see him maybe next week against uh, UTSA. 
Now Oklahoma State ventures into the red zone. Last season, Missouri State had the best red zone defense in FCS. Opponents scored on only 65% of possessions against the Bears in the red zone. Third and long. They need nine at the 20. And a pass batted down. And Andrew Beisel makes another play at linebacker for Missouri State. A senior from Benton, Missouri, who had 96 tackles, second on the team last year to Schaffitzel. Yeah, well, I mean, he's the captain. So here he is right now. He's coming right up the middle here. Going to get just to time this ball. I mean, really, all he's doing, I think he's spying on J.W. Walsh is what it looks like. Walsh wasn't leaving the pocket, so he got right up in the passing lane. That's a really good stop there by the senior inside linebacker. One of two last week for Ben Grogan, the sophomore from Arlington, Texas. 11 of 18 on field goals last season. His attempt is from 37 yards, and Oklahoma State is on the board first. Just over three minutes and 20 seconds. The drive stalls at the 20. Ben Grogan's 37-yard field goal gives Oklahoma State the 3-0 lead before their home crowd against Missouri State here on Fox College Football. It's brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low price every day. By Express Employment on a mission to put a million people to work. And by your local Ford dealer, the Ford Summer Spectacular Sales Event, now playing at a Ford dealer near you. 65 degrees, it's rained most of the day. The rain has let up here in Stillwater. As the fans look on and saw a 10-play, 59-yard drive end after three minutes and 22 seconds, and Ben Grogan hit a 37-yard field goal, Brian. Yeah, and, uh, you know, for the fans, it's 30 degrees cooler than it was yesterday. I th don't think they're minding the rain. Not the least. And then, you know, for the Bears, I mean, they're hoping that the weather can really kind of affect this game. They were hoping for a lot of wind and... Maybe it could work in their favor, but right now, LaMarcus Stewart back there for the Bears to return this kick by Grogan. Kip Smith will be kicking off here for Oklahoma State. First kickoff today. Smith's from Brookfield, Colorado, and it's caught by Stewart. Five-yard line. Running right. Try to turn up field. Has the sideline and bumped out. 34-yard line, so almost a 30-yard return. And the kicker, Kip Smith, was up to help make sure that Stewart was forced out. Well, Stewart just followed his blockers on that return. I mean, real nice job of following him, and he cut back to the wide side of the field. And pretty good starting field position here for Missouri State, who's, as we have mentioned, is coming off a huge comeback win in Nacogdoches last, a week ago last Thursday night, down 24-7. They had a tremendous second half comeback led by that man, Kiara Harris, who is the Express Employment starting quarterback today. The 15th career start for Kiara Harris, a senior from Texarkana, Arkansas. And Phoenix Johnson is starting after being the leading rusher last week. The sophomore from Webb City, Missouri, 71 yards gained last week. Nothing gained here. As a matter of fact, last week, Baldy, the only team at FCS who did not have a negative rushing play was the Missouri State Bears, and they start today's game with a minus three on the first play. Well, I think this defensive line is as talented as Florida State's, and they just showed a part of that on that first play. Second and 13. Now Harris steps up under pressure and another negative play. They didn't have a sack allowed last week. Jimmy Bean and James Castleman. Well, they're there, but Seth Jacobs comes right here. He's going to come with the blitz. He comes free, unblocked right here. He's the one that forces Kara Harris to step up right into that sandwich of Castleman and Bean. Castleman and Bean sandwich. I think there's something there that goes together. Enough to get those paddles slapping. I know that. And last year, Bean led Oklahoma State in sacks at four and a half last season. Third and long for the 29, and the safe play is the handoff. Phoenix Johnson off the right side, picks up some positive yardage. Brought down to the 37, a run of eight, but well short of the first down. That's Josh Furman, a transfer from Michigan, who stopped him. Yeah. But, you know, they got him. Look, it. They tried to run the ball. They played it safe right there. Probably not the way for Terry Allen to win this game right now. But, you know, you're trying to win the line of scrimmage. His strength is his offensive line. He's an old offensive lineman himself. He just thought, like, that's the best way to get it started. Last week, they were run-oriented. 
against Northwestern State. 47 runs, 22 passes. Chris Sullins under pressure on the punt. Kick the line drive. Look out, Tyreek Hill. There's the speed to the 40. Down the sideline, and it is stopped inside the Missouri State 40 by the punter, Chris Sullins, saving a long, electrifying punt return for a touchdown by Hill. But he's going to make a lot of highlight reels this season. He is as electrifying as anybody in this college game right now. And look at him. He's reading the rush right now. Now his eyes are up. Now they get big. And now here comes the speed. He's outrunning the coverage and the angles that players have. We saw it watching the game film in Mike Gundy's office yesterday, uh, Mark, where Florida State constantly took the wrong angle to try to slow him down. 37-yard return for Tyree Kill on the punt. To the 36 of Missouri State. Again, the punter, Chris Sullins, able to force him out. A throw on the left side, and a catch is made. They throw it to Tyreek Hill. Now, last week, he caught six passes out of the backfield. That one's only a short gain. He averaged 10 yards per catch last week. That one's only two yards. Well, the best way to stop Tyreek Hill is simply to tackle the catch. And uh, I noticed, though, just learning about this young phenom, he is left-handed as he flipped the ball with his left hand back to the official. Brady Childs behind Walsh. Jeremy Seaton at fullback for the Cowboys on second down and eight. Good pocket. Walsh off the hands. Chris Lacey, the intended receiver. True freshman from DeSoto, Texas, caught a ball last week against the Seminoles. Well, in talking to Mike Gunn, he said that this wide receiving core could be really special. They're just young and they need experience, they need to play, and Lacey's one of those players. So far, one of the biggest plays of the game looming made by Missouri State. They're tackled by the punter. Mm -hmm. Sullins on Hill's return as now Oklahoma State looks at third down and eight. They get to Rennie Childs. Walsh incomplete. Off target for Lacey again. That's just a bad throw by J.W. Walsh right there. I mean, it's two that have been thrown behind Lacey in back-to-back -back plays. You don't know if the ball was slippery right now and it's coming out because of the wet weather, but those last two throws were not accurate. Of course, Oklahoma State got off to a bad start last Saturday night against the national champs, down 17-0, and really played better the last three quarters and clogged their way back into that game. In high school at Arlington Martin, Ben Brogan hit a 56-yard field goal. But in a year and a game, his collegiate long is only 41. This is from 51, and it is just wide left. Oklahoma State had a great punt return, but they don't capitalize. Still up 3-0. Oklahoma State has made a field goal and missed one. They lead 3 0 as we say hello today to Leslie McCaslin on the sideline. Leslie? Well, guys, Cowboys quarterback J.W. Walsh off to a little bit of a rocky start, but one thing head coach Mike Gundy really loves about this guy is his demeanor. In fact, he tells his youngest son to go to practice and watch him. He said he's always composed and his effort is always 100%. That is the guy that Mike Gundy wants his son to emulate. So that says a lot about the kind of player is he is and why he's the leader of this offense, Mark. And, Leslie, I think that the team does a great job of responding and feeding off of the energy with which Walsh plays. Which we'll discuss more in a moment. An inside handoff, Phoenix Johnson. Missouri State after the missed field goal try by Ben Brogan. Johnson runs for three yards. Pretty good inside trap block that time. Just trying to slow down the, uh, the defensive line upfield pressure that they love to apply. I mean, they kept Florida State last week to under three and a half yards a rush. Just barely over 100 yards rushing on the night and over 30 carries. So Florida State only went 4 for 14 on third downs against the Oklahoma State defense last week. This is officially second down at six. And Kiara Harris's first throw of the day is caught. And it's into Oklahoma State territory. Zach Hoover, a sophomore from Green Valley, Missouri. Well, they, uh, they picked up the blitz that time again by Seth Jacobs, the linebacker. And all the receiver did was just replace the blitzing linebacker. And Kiara Harris read it perfectly. 17 yards, Kiara Harris to Zach Hoover. Caught only four passes as a freshman last season. That's his first catch this year. You see that the Bears are trying to slow the clock down here a little bit. 
the way they're playing. Harris just completed a pass. Throws the deep ball here off play action. Oh, and it's almost caught at the goal line. Gunning for his leading receiver, Julian Burton. Well, Burton was behind the secondary. This is the a play that I said that Kiara Harris had to make, and it was there. It was perfectly thrown, and Burton was only four receptions away from 100 career receptions, probably as big a drop as he's ever had. That was a perfectly thrown ball by Harrison. A chance to take the lead right there. Julian Burton caught four for 140 last Thursday night. The season opening victory in Natchitoches, Louisiana for Missouri State. Now second and ten. Pump fakes. Harris held on to the ball too long and has to eat it. Jimmy Bean is in there again. So is Josh Furman. Opa Haltow. The pressure in Phillips, Kiara Harris. Well, they clapped. But initially, the protection was pretty good. Pretty good job up front right here to begin with. You see the two-man blitz. It's a six-man pressure. I mean, you, you pump fake more than two times, you expect a guy like Jimmy Bean to be able to get home and get to the quarterback. And Bean was the first one to get there. And now it is third and 17 for Missouri State. Phoenix Johnson broke one tackle. The second tackle, though, by Seth Jacobs, unable to escape that. Jacobs, the sophomore from Arroyo Grande, California. Well, one thing I'd say about Missouri State thus far here, Mark, is they don't seem intimidated by this at all. I mean, right. they take the deep shot to Burton. They get a first down and a nice throw by Harris. Uh, you know, they've made a couple of defensive stops right here. I mean, Terry Allen, he's got this team ready to play here. He gave him the weekend off last week after that comeback win against Northwestern State. I think the kids are responding here. Uh, Oklahoma State here. It's not like they're running out, running them out of uh, Boone Pickett Stadium to start with. On the last punt, Chris Sullins made one of the biggest plays of the game so far when he tackled Tyree Kill on the return. Now Brandon Shepard is back, but he won't have a chance to return it. It's a blocked punt that is picked up at the 30-yard line and run back to the 20 by Oklahoma State's Jordan Stearns. Well, the Cowboys make the big first big play of the game on special teams, but I got to admit, this look right here doesn't look like it's real solid protection. I mean, it's kind of a funky protection look where, yeah, I guess you could fake it out of that. But Oklahoma State wasn't fooled by any of it. Came right over that big opening of the right side of the line. And one of the young players getting a chance to establish himself not only as a starter back at safety, but also on special teams, Jordan Stearns. Block the punt, return the punt to the Missouri State 21 off the block. Now a handoff. Rennie Childs turns up field. 15, 10, bumped out of bounds. It'll be first and goal. There's also a marker down. Brandon Sheet from Middletown, Delaware, stopping Childs before he reaches the end zone. Holding offense, number 58. 10-yard penalty, first down. That's Daniel Koning at left tackle. The senior who uh, is one of the anchors, one of only two starting, returning starters from a year ago. Of course, had two brothers that played here in this program. I mean, by far the most experienced. Yeah. 23 to make it today, 24 career starts for Daniel Koning. And instead of first and goal, it's first and 20. And Walsh fakes the handoff and keeps, has a block. And once again, Oklahoma State not first in goal, but they do put themselves in position for a likely first down on a 20-yard run by Walsh. Schaffitzel bumped him out. Well, you have to account for JW as a runner. I mean, he is a great athlete. He just did. kind of showed that on the read option. This is an inside handoff for any Childs. Stacked up at the 10. Mark, think about this. I mean, just a week ago, last Saturday night, in front of a national audience, they took the national champions to the brink. You just wonder, like, you know, trying to get up to that level here against Missouri State, an FCS team, mentally, are they as ready to play this game as they were in Arlington last Saturday night? The closest regular season game Florida State played last year, yeah. 14 points over yeah. Boston College. 
And now you've got Walsh keeping again. Five yard line, fighting for the end zone, but knocked down two yards shy. Andrew Beisel, Caleb Schaffitzel, names we've already called frequently today on the Missouri State defense. AW is getting up limping here. I mean, he, he has to learn how to protect himself here. He is not a big guy at 205 pounds. He's taken a couple shots in this game. They're not out of the first quarter. I know he loves to run, but he has to learn how to protect himself as a runner. He's run for 41 yards today. Diamond formation, third down at the two. They don't need a touchdown to have a first down, and they may not have even gotten the first down here on the run by Rennie Childs. That's where they kind of think they miss uh, Roland, who's a little bit more powerful inside. I don't think there's any question they want to go for it. Bringing an extra tight end, Blake Jarwin here. A little more power along with Seaton, who's a very good lead blocker. That he is. Teddy Johnson is in the backfield also. Childs behind Walsh. This is fourth down inside the two. A yard to go and busting up the gut for a touchdown. Rennie Childs. Starting off a blocked punt, Brian, they drive it, and Rennie Childs finishes it off. Well, here's the blocks up front. I mean, that's what kind of gets it started right here. Runs right behind Seaton, who's in the end zone, and good blocking on that left side behind the most experienced group of Grisby and Coney. Then Grogan makes it 10 0. First touchdown this season for Rennie Childs, sophomore from Houston. But Jordan Stearns is the man who got it started off. He blocked the punt. He picked it up and returned it to near the Missouri State 20. And Childs finishes off the drive. Oklahoma State a 10-0 lead. Their first touchdown completing the OK Career Tech first half scoring drive. It started after a blocked punt by Jordan Stearns. He returned it to the 21. They overcame a first down holding penalty and officially five plays, 21 yards. Rennie Childs had one touchdown last year, has his first this year, a two yard run on fourth down. Yeah, I mean, uh, he could have picked up the first down, but good lead blocking right there. And Childs, of course, getting the chance to start with the, uh, the injury to Desmond Roland. And I think going forward here, I mean, I just saw J.W. Walsh go into the locker room. Uh, we may see their backup quarterback, Dax Garman, here their next series. There he is warming up. For his first collegiate action, potentially. LaMarcus Stewart and Julian Burton are the deep end with Kip Smith preparing for Oklahoma State's second kickoff today. Burton will take a knee. Missouri State will have it at the 25 after this timeout on the Oklahoma State a 10 0 lead 344 remaining in the first quarter Fox College football third time on the field today for the Missouri State offense as we look at the Academy sports right stuff key players Julian Burton at wide receiver 140 yards last week and on defense volley for Oklahoma State Emmanuel Ogba yeah. two sacks last week of Jameis Winston. Yeah first two sacks against uh, the Heisman Trophy winner of the season by Ogba. Rolling left after the play fake and throwing on the wheel route Natty Johnson 50 yard line and rumbling down into Oklahoma State territory. Big strike Larry Stevens the tackle but a long pass play for 42 yards. Great call by Rob Christopher, the, uh, the offensive coordinator, to get Harris to bootleg left, get Oklahoma State to really bite hard on the fake, and then on the outside to see Matty Johnson just get free like that. Wow, I mean, that's the second big play right now. And Matty Johnson is in motion. Kalen Crowder runs the ball from the 33 of Oklahoma State, and it's stacked up behind the line. Well, one way that you can counteract the speed that Oklahoma State has is by misdirection counterplace misdirection because if they're really fast mark going one way you can get them to go a long way and that's what happened on that bootleg Matty Johnson by the way the older brother of Phoenix Johnson number 11 who you've seen in the backfield today for Missouri State but again right now Kalen Crowley is at running back they can off step up Harris Sails it way over Julian Burton on the sideline. 
Good decision by Harris just to stay alive and get rid of that football. He was just throwing it away and not taking negative play. You'd mentioned last week against Northwestern State, not one negative offensive play the entire day. One of the reasons why they were able to make that comeback. The comeback saw them down 24-7 early in the third quarter. Colby Isbell made a big play defensively, forcing and recovering a fumble at the one-yard line. And in the final 13 and a half minutes of the game, Missouri State scored 20 unanswered points against Northwestern State to win 34-27. Harris is throwing. He's going deep. He finds Julian Burton, and he makes the catch this time for the touchdown. <laughs> A pass he dropped earlier in the first quarter. He does not drop this time. Julian Burton behind Larry Stevens. Yep. Touchdown, Missouri State. It's a great throw here by Kiara Tom, uh, Harris here because he gets Burton to beat Stevens, and he puts it right where he needed to. I mean, he was one-on-one -on -one with Stevens right there, who's a fifth-year senior. He's seen a lot since he's been here, and he beats him uh, cleanly. Banani's extra point, and that's blocked. That's two plays in the kicking game made today by Oklahoma State. James Castleman blocks the kick. That is certainly something we've seen in the past. He had two kick blocks last year. Right up the middle. And uh, Castleman here is he's a phenomenal athlete. Amarillo's high school's all-time right in the middle. Time Amarillo's high school's all-time leading scorer in basketball. So you know he's got some hops there. We said it from the beginning, you know, one of the strengths of this Oklahoma State team trying to replace so many different players at different positions is this defensive line. Mike Dundee told us yesterday he felt like it might be the best defensive line he's had in his 10 seasons here. Castleman, a defensive lineman, blocked the extra point, but the touchdown was yeah. scored by Julian Burton. Well, it's Burton's 97th career catch. Gets behind. I mean, Stevens never had a chance. And Burton is the one guy. He had the four catches for 140 yards last week. Uh, 22nd straight game with the catch. I mean, he's the one guy that when you look at their speed, he looks like he could play in the Big 12. I mean, he's got that type of top flight speed, the hands, the moves. Uh, a lot of these guys want to be able to compete against the Big 12 team to show everybody that I can play at that level. And 97 catches, Brian, in a career where two seasons have been cut short by broken collarbones for Julian Hurt. Short kickoff, caught at the 20. James Washington, 30. James Washington, 40, out of bounds. What will Oklahoma State do at quarterback? J.W. Walsh limped off a moment ago. Will we see the first action for Dax Garman in a competitive game since 2009 when he was at Jones High School in suburban Oklahoma City? By the way, there's been a penalty assessed here against Missouri State. Well, here's J.W. Walsh on this run where it looks like right here, that foot gets caught underneath the pile. He limped off the field, and it is Dax Garman taking the snap right now from center Paul Lewis. Get more into the story of Dax Garman in a moment. But now he has his first collegiate snap coming from his own 47-yard line. Tyreek Hill is in the backfield. Bounces out, ran out of a tackle, turns the corner. Got behind the defense, but just didn't have enough room. He has to step out of bounds as Matt Rush forced him to the sideline, but a first down picked up. He, he runs back to the huddle pass. <laughs> you know? He's just born to run. And that run was for just over 10 yards. Now onto the left side on the pass, David Blinton. Blinton had a long touchdown reception, 55 yards last week. Jeremy Springer brings down Blinton after a short game. Well, one thing about Oklahoma State's offense, you know, over the last couple of years, whether it was Clint Shelf or Wes Lund or J.W. Walsh, I mean, the offense never changes no matter who's in at quarterback. Garmin's in at quarterback right now, and at running back is Tyreek Hill. Jarwin at tight end for Oklahoma State. And a hand on the pass. Dylan Cole. Right in the passing lane. I mean, they're trying to throw that flat pass right here. And you're going to see Cole right here, right in the passing lane. Good defense. Big left hand right there. Read the play well. 
Leads to this uh, first third down of the career for Dax Garman. Sophomore Dylan Cole had nine tackles last week. Pass broken up, forcing Oklahoma State into third and ten. Garmin bowling over the middle. David Glidden with his second catch on the drive down to the Missouri State 27. 15 yards. You say bullet, I'll say frozen rope. Either way, Garmin's got an arm. I mean, that ball was a frozen rope uh, right to Glidden. And now a quick snap, and Chris Lacey catches out of the left flat, bites out of the tackle, steps out of bounds. Marker down. Penalty here with 125 left in the first quarter. Arm has impressed me with his arm already. Randy Crystal is the referee. Big 12 uh, group of officials, eight of them on the field today. Illegal block in the back. Offense. Substitution. Infraction. Defense. Penalties offset. Be first and ten. Two times today of offsetting penalties as we hear now from Leslie McCaslin. Leslie. Well, guys, no news yet on JW, but let me tell you a little bit about Dax Garman. Mike Yersich was so excited before the game. He said he has had a great week of practice, and just like you, Brian, he said his strength is his arm. He can spin it, he told me. He can throw it down the field on you. So he was so excited that Dax was finally going to get an opportunity at some point in the game. We just didn't know it was going to be this soon. Mike Yersich, the second-year offensive coordinator for Oklahoma State. Garmin on first down, throwing in zone, jump ball for Jawan Seals, and the pass play is broken up by Matt Rush. He put it right on Seals' his hands. I mean, it was a perfect throw to the sophomore, their leading receiver from a year ago. Uh, I tell you, I mean, here it is. I mean, it's Seals has like got into his periscope right there, couldn't put it on a platter a whole lot better. One of the many young corners for Missouri State. Mm -hmm. Matt Rush is a true freshman from right there in Springfield, Missouri. Garmin hands it off, and Tyree Kill is trying to move to the outside, and this is strung out and nicely done by Dylan Cole with the tackle. He's already had a pass breakup, batting down a throw on this drive. Well, one way to take speed away is to flatten that speed, and what Dylan Cole and Shafitzel did was they just widened a uh, Tyree kill to the sideline that time and hey, on, took a negative gain as a result. Minus two on the run, leaving third and 12 in the lap of Dax Garman. He's converted a third and 10 through a pass to Clinton, flushed from the pocket, and an incompletion down at the 10 yard line. Wow, the Bears are playing good football right here. I mean, they're getting him, uh, Oklahoma State, here into third and long situations right now. They're playing tough defense. They're in the passing lanes. I mean, I think the most impressive part right here, let me look at the number of bears around the receiver here. Shepard's, uh, he's not all alone. He's got coverage right behind him. That's a heck of a play on the ball by Shafitza. Ben Grogan is two of eight on field goal attempts outside of 40 yards last year and this season. Two for seven, beg your pardon. Trying to go three for eight on this 47-yard attempt, which is hooking and is wide left. 17 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Oklahoma State's second missed field goal today. They lead 10-6. There you see J.W. Walsh on crutches along the Oklahoma State sideline. So he's got a bag of ice down on that right ankle that got rolled up, and so we will not see JW the rest of the day in that look. We'll talk a lot more about Dax Garman. That's too bad because JW coming off a, a really strong second half last week. Had a couple opportunities down 37-31 to go back and win that game late in the fourth quarter. From the 29 after the missed field goal, bouncing out on the run. Missouri State, this is going to be close to first down yardage. On the run by Kalen Crowder. Well, we said we'll see three running backs today. Heaston, Johnson, and now Crowder. Gets and his first take and behind a veteran offensive line that blocked that play well. And a big moment for Crowder. He's from Bartlesville, Oklahoma, yeah. oh, just yeah. up the road. Ran for 1,500 yards there as a senior. Yeah, Springfield, Missouri. About a three-and-a-half, four-hour drive from Stillwater, Oklahoma. 
And they have put on a good show, the folks from Springfield, Missouri. The Missouri State Bears fell behind 10-0. Then Burton caught the, caught the touchdown pass. And so after one quarter at Boone Pickens Stadium in Stillwater, it's Oklahoma State 10, Missouri State 6. This is Fox College Football. One quarter done in Stillwater, Oklahoma State 10, Missouri State 6. Now we go to the Fox College Football Studio for a game break with Greg Wolf. Guys, thanks. Earlier today, number 20, Kansas State down two at Iowa State. Final minute 34, Jake Waters from eight yards out scores. K-State survives. Next up for them, number five, Auburn, September 18th in Manhattan. Mark, Brian, back to you. Thank you, Greg. It took two fourth quarter touchdowns today for Kansas State in Ames. They were down 28-20 to start the fourth. Of course, Iowa State got off a rough, rough start last week, losing to the Missouri Valley's champion, North Dakota State, badly in Ames, Iowa last week. And Missouri State, part of the Missouri yeah. Valley Football Conference. Good, good football in that part of the country. Kier Harris is thrown for 93 yards, completing three of five passes so far. Ran for a first down. Kalen Crowder. Now Harris is on the quarterback keeper and off the right side is near another first down. Picked up nine. Well, he fakes the fly sweep to Burton that time. It's a play that they ran over and over the second half against Northwestern State last Thursday night. And uh, he runs it right behind his right guard that time, Gal Beers. Picks up a nice nine yards and first down. Robert Booker at center, Richard Galbeers at right guard, and left tackle Zach Cooley in the strength of Missouri State's offensive line. Out of the left flat on second and short, Julian Burton, who caught the touchdown pass earlier, caught that pass and did a swarm of Oklahoma State defenders led by Josh Furman bringing him down for a loss. Well, Josh Furman all, Furman all the way out there, outside the numbers to be able to bring Burton down. We've seen can be slippery and has gotten behind this Oklahoma State defense twice in the first quarter, one for a big touchdown. Josh Berman, after receiving his degree at Michigan, sought out Oklahoma State yeah. and transferred here. One more year of eligibility, why not? Try to provide some experience on this defense. Rolling right on third down. Harris incomplete. Jimmy Bean has gotten to Harris a couple of times already today and was in the neighborhood as Harris had to throw it away. Yeah, but I mean, Harris is playing a smart football game. If he's taking what the defense has given him, we've seen him, forget about stats, he's thrown at least two away. And he's not going to take that negative play. Now the decision to kick this ball right here for Terry Allen to Tyreek Hill. Is this going to be a smart move or not? Sullins has had one block today. He's also made a tackle. Now it's a bad snap. Sullins has picked it up. He's going to try to get this punt away and somehow manages to do wow. so. It will roll. It could have been a disaster. It ends up being a 14-yard punt, which given the circumstances, I think they'll take. Well, not only that, but he kicked it with his other foot. He had to go to his left foot to get the ball off. I mean, two bad mistakes here. Watch uh, Sullins here. Yeah. He just drops. I mean, it's not a perfect snap, but it goes right th through his hands. Now, watch. He goes left foot on you. Pretty nifty play right there just to get some yards out of that punt. And they've moved the ball up to the 45. Officially, the punt was only nine yards. Dax Garman, his second series, hands the ball off. Big hole. Rennie Childs. And upended in Missouri State territory with a first down run. He gains 14 to the Bears, 41. Brandon Cheaton took him off his feet. Right up the middle behind uh, the senior, Chris Grisby, that time. Pretty little split right up the middle. Now Garmin to throw on first down. Clinton's third catch and broke out of a tackle. 30, cuts to the 20. Oklahoma State quickly on the move. This Clinton is some player. I mean, he's just, he's tough with the ball in his hands. He's not a big guy, never has been, but very shifty. Uh, can stop and start with the best of them out there in the slot. That was 21 yards. Now Rennie Childs, big hole off the right side. Stopped after an eight-yard gain. By Brandon Sheep again. Pretty good blend right here in this drive of Childs up the middle and then, you know, the lateral horizontal throws by Garmin to the outside. 
Rainy Childs getting a lot of work today. With Desmond rolling out. And this time, Garmin faked to Childs, kept the ball. First and goal coming up as Dax Garmin runs around the left side for six. Well, you know, Garmin was at Jones High School, transferred to Southlake, uh, Carroll High School, Southlake, Texas, there outside of Dallas. Never played, went to Arizona, didn't play, transferred here, sat out, didn't play last year, and here he is five years later getting some significant time. Officially the seven. First and goal for Dax Garman with Rennie Childs, who's already run for 27 yards today in the backfield and running for more yards here up the gut. Stopped shy of the goal line by Mackenzie James on the defensive line. Garmin trying to get him lined up quickly here, trying to catch the Bears a little bit off guard. Childs, second two-yard touchdown run of the day for Rennie Childs. Oklahoma State up 10. Well, this isn't too difficult right here. Got two tight ends on the field straight. Just the monster mash up front. Looked like the old electric football game. Like just put the guys toe to toe and just let them kind of like just bounce right through the, the defensive front. They always win in circles for me on that <laughs> they, game, Brian. Put that little piece of cotton. There you go. Ben Grogan extends the lead to 17-6 for Oklahoma State. 3-13 gone by in the second quarter. Oklahoma State capitalizes on great field position because of a miscue on the punt. They've already had one block today. That was a poor snap, but a poor punt. And Childs finishes off the drive for the Cowboys. Oklahoma State's two touchdowns today have been Rennie Childs running behind that big offensive line. Two-yard touchdown runs in both situations for Childs. Six plays, 55 yards to cap that drive in just under two minutes. Set up by problems on the punt. Dax Garman engineered the drive, his second drive with J.W. Walsh out of the game. 17-6, the Cowboys lead. What do you say about that backup quarterback? You're always just one play away. Yep. You know, as a backup. You always have to prepare like you're the starter. Jeff Smith kicks it off to the goal line. Zach Hoover is running back, and Zach Hoover had a seam beyond the 20 and eventually stopped around the 27-yard line as we hear from Leslie McCaslin. Leslie? Well, guys, Oklahoma State does not give injury reports, but we saw J.W. Walsh come out from the locker room just a few moments ago on crutches. It's his right foot. It's got ice on it. It's heavily bandaged. He doesn't have his right shoe or his helmet, and he's sitting over on the sideline, not even on the bench. So looks like it may be Dax Garman the rest of the way, guys. It certainly was a nice day, Leslie, that J.W. Walsh was building. Yeah. 42 rushing yards, 30 passing yards. Kiara Harris from the 27. Missouri State has one long touchdown pass today to Julian Burton. They have an inside handoff here. And room to run for Kalen Crowder. Crowler showing some elusiveness. Crowder, that is, out near the 50 on the run to the Oklahoma State 48. I mean, just a read option right up the middle here. I mean, you're going to get uh, there's good, really good blocks up front. I mean, good block that time by Gal Beers, the right guard, and Booker, the All-American at the FCS level, the All-Conference player. I mean, just moving the defensive line right out of it. Robert Booker in the center, 320 pounds, a junior from Ozark, Missouri. A throw on the right side, and Josh Furman was lurking, came close to a pick six. Instead, it will be second and ten of the Cowboy 48. You know, that Furman is playing the weak side linebacker. I mean, he's like, he's almost like a strong safety. He's only 200 pounds. But he gets both hands, well, uh, almost both hands on the ball right in the passing. I mean, that is almost dangerous going the other direction. Catch out of the backfield. Phoenix Johnson had a conversion on second down and 10 as Phoenix Johnson totes it inside the Oklahoma State 35 14 yard pass. Play. Watch this. It's just a, a little middle screen right here. Really well set up and designed. Invite the rush, let those guys get sack happy, and then counter punch them. 
Good call by Rob Christopher, the offensive coordinator. 15 yards to Phoenix Johnson. It went down to the hands of Larry Stevens. Now Harris, once again, they're throwing the screen, and this one is caught over the middle by the big tight end. 6-7 Gannon Sinclair for nine yards. I tell you, that's, that's smart. They need to get Sinclair the ball. He's a guy that has a chance to continue to grow. I mean, he left high school, he was 160 pounds, he's 270 now. He's a chance at the next level to maybe go to offensive tackle. That's what NFL teams are looking for. Converted tight ends with athletic ability, and they move into tackle. The paddles continue to thunder here in Stillwater. Second and two, keeper, Kiara Harris turns the corner, slides down with a first down for Missouri State. You so know, Kiara Harris is a senior, and that's how you protect yourself as a quarterback. You're gonna run read option. You know you need two yards for the first down. Watch him be the athlete that he is right here, get down. Once you go feet first and you slide, you're down, you're protected, they're not gonna hit you. Not supposed to hit you, and that's what quarterbacks that want to run the ball need to learn how to do at every level right now. Harris ran for four. Last week he ran for 66 yards against Northwestern State and scored a touchdown. He doesn't like something here calling a timeout at the 22-yard line of Oklahoma State with the Cowboys leading Missouri State 17-6. Fox College football is brought to you by Mercy Health. Your life is our life's work. By Whataburger. Get your day started at Whataburger with a new jalapeno cheddar biscuit. And by Quicken Loans for a mortgage experience that's energized, that's engineered to amaze. They're trying to get energized and help out the defense here in Stillwater. Missouri State has driven 51 yards on this drive. And after a timeout, they have it at the Oklahoma State 22-yard line. Running Kiara Harris upended at the 20 and down to the 19. Another keeper for the quarterback for Missouri State. These linebackers from Oklahoma State, they play so close to the defensive line. I mean, they're only about three yards deep. They really hug the line of scrimmage. Berman in your picture, the senior transfer out of uh, Michigan. And they really want to, like, get in the backfield and penetrate. I think right now the Bears are taking advantage of it by hitting them with some quick hitters. Berman, a transfer from Michigan, his hometown, Annapolis, Maryland. Second down at seven. Harris flushed from the pocket. Got away from Trace Clark. Jimmy Bean is chasing. And Harris is forced out. <laughs> Harris is elusive, though. I mean, he does have athletic ability. I mean, they've had his, their hands on him a bunch of times today, and he's, he's run out of the grasp. He's taking control, talking to uh, Kalen Crowder right there, probably about protection issues. Said that he, you know, that one of the issues coming into the season is could he be a consistent player? He was a little inconsistent over the past couple of years. But he played well last Thursday night. Playing well, taking care of the football right now. Today, the senior from Texarkana, Arkansas, is making his 15th career start. It's third down. They throw the screen, and the intended receiver was off target, and Oklahoma State had a defender lurking. Ryan Simmons also provided pressure. Yeah, Ryan Simmons, the middle linebacker, who I think is better than last year's leading tackler, Caleb Levy, who moved on. Ryan Simmons all over the field last Saturday night against the Seminoles. Applied pressure that time to Harris and forced a bad throw. Could not get the ball to Eric Christopher, son of offensive coordinator Rob Christopher. Marcelo Bonani from Lake Wales, Florida. Attempting a field goal and it's blocked. That's two blocked kicks today for Oklahoma State. 39-yard attempt, no good. Ulfa Haltow. Well, I said one of the differences in this game was going to be the, the level of play of Oklahoma State's defensive line. And that doesn't mean just stopping the run. Look at that big ball getting up there. Ofa Haltow's blocked field goal keeps the Oklahoma State lead at 11 points as we check in with a Fox College football game break from Greg Wolf. All right, thanks. A costly turnover for Iowa against Ball State. Bad exchange on the handoff. Blake Dewitt goes 35 yards the other way for the score, and the Cardinals lead the Hawkeyes 7-3 in the second quarter. Mark, Brian, back to you. 
We saw Ball State, a very senior-laden mm. team last year. Yeah. They've got a lot of experience to replace, especially yeah. on offense. Keith Wenning, the quarterback, went to the Ravens. And Willie Sneed was in camp with the Cleveland Browns. Pretty lethal combination out of Muncie, Indiana. Oklahoma State's kick block units have been a lethal combination today. They just had their third, but now Dylan Pohl on the first play after for Missouri State. He just wraps up Dex Garmin with a big sack. Well, he came around Zach uh, Crabtree, and he came on the blitz that time, and really Garmin never felt him. He's going to come around the outside right here, actually beats the tight end over there. Tight end was Jarwin on that play. He beat him with straight speed off the snap. Brian's made a couple big plays here today. For him. He sure has. He's made some of the most significant plays for the Missouri State defense today. Here he is calling signals right now as the buzz linebacker. A loss of six. Clinton's in motion. Will take the ball on the quick run, and he's yanked out inside the 15. Wow, what a play that was by Matt Rush. Matt Rush, the corner, the freshman corner, just came up with a big force right off of he sees it coming on the fly sweep and he beats the block by Childs and big competition that left cornerback spot between two freshmen and Eric Phillips and Matt Rush and Rush lost his job after last week but I think he wants that job back. The way Glidden went down it looked like there might have been a face mask but the replay showed clearly that there was not. From the 13 third and long after consecutive losses for Oklahoma State. Rolling throwing across his body. Garmin finds Brandon Shepard. Shepard off to the races. Broke a tackle at the 30. He will score. What a tremendous play. Garmin to Shepard. That's what a big arm can do for you. Dax Garmin got out of harm's way, bought a little bit of time, and then he just threw it across his body here to Shepard, who's running a post route. Hit him right in stride. But he, the good thing is, when he gets outside, his eyes are up, and then he just uncorks it. You throw it across your body like that on a rope to Shepard. You don't do that with an average arm. That's a big-time arm to be able to do it. Extra point for Ben Grogan. Missouri State had made a great defensive play on first down and on second down. They had the Cowboys pinned at the 13-yard line on third and long, and Dax Garman does this. The beautiful throw drops it into Brandon Shepard, who runs away and scores the Oklahoma State touchdown. Cowboys up here in the second quarter, 24-6 on the Bears. Watch. Here's Shafitzel, the safety. They're going to run a post right against him. Shepard's just going to get him in space right here, going to get him a little stick move, a little fake to the outside. Garmin gets outside the pocket, hits him in stride, and we said the difference in this game would be speed, and that's uh, an example of what speed can do. You get behind uh, a defense on third and long, and uh, credit to Shepard with his speed, and then Dax Garmin with a perfect throw on the move. Back across his body, rolling right and throwing back to his left. That was a throw. Short kickoff, nine-yard line. One back for Hoover, cut down to the 20. Make it Deion Holloman on the kick return. Stop to the 20. Oklahoma State 24, Missouri State 6. Dax Garman's now thrown for 120 yards, yeah. 87 in one fell swoop. Well, I mean, one thing about football at any level is when somebody gets hurt, it presents an opportunity for the next man up. You hear it all the time. It's almost cliche in the game of football. But Dax Garman's never thrown a college pass. You wouldn't know it by how he has played so far this afternoon in his first opportunity. Kiara Harris, a quarterback for Missouri State with Phoenix Johnson in the backfield. Johnson will run, and Johnson won't find anywhere to run. Ogba from the backside. James Castleman coming up the works inside. That Emmanuel Ogba is from Houston, which is the same high school as Russell Okum, the talented left tackle of Seattle. Sixth pick in the draft a few years back. One of the six first-round picks here under Mike Dundee. But Ogba, uh, 
has really come on here and is a guy that I think the rest of this Big 12 is going to have to deal with. He was the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Week last week. And the pass is caught, but they read the inside screen, and down goes Julian Burton at the hands of Seth Jacobs. Well, we have mentioned Seth Jacobs' name a couple times. He's been the designated blitzer a bunch today. Had uh, a big game last Saturday night. Had the interception against Jameis Winston. Anytime you pick off the Heisman Trophy winner, that's a pretty good notch that you can call home and email and, you know, all those different things you can do out there today. Probably had a lot of attention that night. Ashton Lankin also had an interception last week along with Seth Jacobs. And now Missouri State will be forced Full back. start. Offense number 19. Five-yard penalty, third down. Okay, it's, uh, that's on Gannon Sinclair, the, the senior tight end. That's the first illegal procedure penalty, which is a credit to the Bears. They played a lot of loud music. Uh, Terry Allen did all week in getting ready for this game and handle the atmosphere here. It's not easy to come into a stadium of 60,000 and uh, be able to run all your signals and do a lot of silent counts that they're doing right now. Oklahoma State just hit a long pass play for a touchdown on third and long. But the safe play here is the inside handoff spinning and squirming forward for seven, but well short of a first down is Phoenix Johnson. They're just not good enough right now to overcome negative plays. That procedure penalty hurt them. Now the decision, of course, for the punter, Chris Sullins, with Tyreek Hill just kind of hanging around his 45-yard line. Do you give this speedster a chance? It's been an adventure today in the punting game. Sullins trying to kick the ball away from Tyreek Hill and successfully does so as the ball goes out of bounds just outside the Oklahoma State 40. Here's the Bank of Oklahoma first half game summary and special team. Early on, good field position for the Cowboys would lead to this uh, Rennie Childs uh, inside handoff for a run. Uh, that ball deflected off one of the up backs and Sullen's got to punt that ball away with his opposite foot. Leads to another Rennie Childs two-yard dash. And those are two of the scores for Oklahoma State here in this first half. And keep in mind that Oklahoma State has blocked three kicks today. You saw that one punt block as Garmin throws incomplete for Austin Hayes. We've had a 39-yard field goal attempt for Banani for Missouri State, blocked by Opa Haltow. You had an extra point attempt by Missouri State, blocked by James Castle. Enough mistakes in one afternoon here that you don't want to see over the course of an entire season. Three block kicks in a game is a school record for Oklahoma State. The Cowboys have scored on four of six possessions today. They've had a couple of missed field goals. Surging forward on the second down handoff is Tyreek Hill. And it's a big part of why, you know, this game is really in favor of the Cowboys up 24-6 right now here in the second quarter. It's just the mistakes. Missouri State, it's not like they don't belong in the field. They're playing pretty tough, hard-nosed football all the way around. A long six needed here. Back to Garmin on the snap. And now pressure. And he's trying to fight away, but can't. Christian Hoffman with a sack for Missouri State. Yeah, that's just a kind of a delayed pressure that time by Hoffman. They started with just a three-man rush, and then he's just going to come kind of late here on the outside. Really beats the, the right tackle that time, Zach Crabtree. I mean, he should have been in position and not allow him to go inside like that. Last week, problems for Caleb Smith on two snaps. So now Josh Elias is snapping here on this attempted punt back to Kip Smith on target snap. There is some pressure, and there are markers down. They got the punter. What's happening down on the other end where the punt rolled dead is irrelevant to the Kip Smith getting run into here by John Edwards. Personal foul, roughing the kicker, number 49, be a 15-yard penalty and an automatic first down. 
Well, they were going for it. They're going for the block kick here, trying to steal a possession and get good field position. Really want to go about nine and a half yards, take it. And as a result, ran right into that plant leg of Smith. And so the kicking woes just continue for the Bears today in every single phase of this game. Yesterday, we talked with Mike Gundy, Terry Allen's counterpart. The head coaches for the two teams, and Mike was really disappointed in some of the special teams miscues his team had mm -hmm. last week. But today, special teams is favoring Oklahoma State. There's a nice play on defense, though. Once again, we call the name of Dylan Cole as he wrestles down Tyreek Hill. I mean, just as, that was just a feel. It wasn't even a blitz. He just chased that play from behind. He got a good head start. And I tell you, the sophomore out of Missouri is really making some plays here this afternoon as active as anybody on this field Tyreek Hill lost a yard personal foul roughing the kicker set this up now Carmen on the flea flicker rolls right throws deep and broken up incomplete at the five yard line as there were three defenders around Juwan Seals well, they went for the big play, you know, the throwback to, to Garmin. He let that thing fly about over 50 yards on a rope here to Seals. He's got an arm. Yeah. Pretty good recovery here by the Bears. I mean, two guys in good shape right now to make that play on the ball. Pretty good coverage. Brandon Sheaton back there for him. Also, Eric Phillips. Three of eight today on third down for Oklahoma State. Gorman, bullet over the middle. Brandon Shepard caught it, absorbed the big hit, and is down near the Bears 20, officially the 23. That Gorman can spin the ball now. You just see that thing rotate. That comes out of his hand pretty hot. Nice throw into kind of the teeth of the Bears defense. 26 yards on the pass. The hit by Schapitzel may have rattled the teeth mm. of Brandon yeah. Shepard, but. Ball start. Offense number 81. Five yard penalty. First down. That seals the sophomore. You don't even need to hear any signals. Just look at the ball. When the ball moves, you move. Oklahoma State had seven penalties for 70 yards last week. Two today for 15. They've had two other penalties that have been called in an offsetting situation with Missouri State. Play fake, Garmin, first and 15, throws the ball near the goal line, stretching for the end zone, just short, Jawan Seals. When was the last time Dax Garmin played? 2009, Brian. I mean, that's like an eternity in the game of football, but it doesn't look like it. He's sharp. And he hands it off inside Tyree Kill, stuffs. Missouri State keeps him out of the end zone on first and goal. Watch this throw here. Does this ball come out right now. Sets that back foot and lets it rip. A nice throw. In stride to Seals. Seals desperately trying to get that ball across the goal line. It's all about touchdowns. Speaking of touchdowns, Rennie Childs has two short runs for TDs today. And he's in the backfield. Mm -hmm. And you've got Teddy Johnson and Jeremy Seaton as the fullbacks in this diamond formation. They'll try and plow the road for Rennie Childs, but Missouri State stiffens up and keeps him out. Yeah, he's short. Short of the goal line. You love to see that from the fight of Missouri State. They're not looking up at the clock or the scoreboard or anything right now. Just playing the play. And the clock is inside the final minute of the first half, by the way. I, would, I mean, Childs has two touchdown runs inside the three today. I would expect this to be the exact same play. On the one inch line. Third and goal. Last Time week. Out. Missouri State. That's their second. It's 30 seconds in length. Last week, Terry Allen called a timeout with his defense, and their backs were against the wall down 24-7 early in the third quarter against Northwestern State. They forced a turnover. Yeah, Colby Isbell knocked the ball loose and, and also recovered. And recovered the fumble. And I'm sure Terry Allen saying, remember this last week, guys? They were ready to stick a fork in us. We made a play. Same part of the field, going in to score right at the goal line. And the score in that case, again, was 24-7. 
when yeah. Missouri State was down to Northwestern State. Let's go to the Fox College Football Studio. Here's a game break from Greg Wolf. All right, thanks. UMass driving against Colorado. It helps to have a six foot seven target. Gene Sifrin, great one handed grab for the 14 yard score. UMass leads Colorado 21 20, third quarter. Guys, back to you. And here late in the second quarter, Oklahoma State after that Bears timeout. The Cowboys out on the field. Third and goal inside the one. They like running behind the left side of that offensive line. That's what the experience is. Oh, Dylan Cole, big hit in the backfield. That's a great time. Timing by Dylan Cole to make that play. Child's never had a chance as he came with great speed off the edge. Not just speed, but anticipation. Time to snap perfectly. Nobody cut off the backside. And Cole was there. Oklahoma State's letting the clock run down now. Dylan Cole, number 31 for Missouri State. He's had a heck of a first half. There's no doubt. I mean, he's made play after play in the run game, in the passing game. Sacks. I mean, he's the MVP of this Bear defense by far here in this first half. You know, and, and Terry Allen told us, he goes, look, playing this game against, you know, a Big 12 powerhouse like Oklahoma's, it's a win-win. Our players get a chance to compete against, uh, you know, the best in college football. We get to play in this atmosphere. Uh, it's still about going and competing and winning the Missouri Valley Conference this season. But this will, I think, give a lot of his players a taste that, you know what, we're not that far away from, you know, major FBS competition. Coming up at halftime, Rob Stone, Petros Papadakis, and Dave Wanstead are back in the studio looking ahead of the big game tonight at Austin Stadium as Texas and Texas will look for revenge against BYU. On fourth and goal, this will be a chip shot attempt for Ben Grogan. Made one, missed two today. He needs to build his confidence here. This is like an extra point. 19 yards from an angle. Kip Smith puts the ball down and Brogan sails. out of the end zone and the half ends with Ben Grogan's second field goal of the day. Cowboys 27, Missouri State Bears 6 at halftime here at Boone Pickens Stadium and uh, now almost sunny Stillwater. A lot of rain last night and early this morning. Clouds are parting. Halftime is here and Leslie McCaslin is on the field with Mike Gundy. Well, Coach Dax Garman filled in nicely. Will it be him the rest of the way, and how does that change things? Yeah, he'll be in the rest of the way. You know, we got to find out what uh, what type of injury that JW has. Um, he's doing okay. He made some mistakes, but he threw some nice passes. Big plays on special teams. What do you think of that in the first half? Well, we need to do a better job of defending our, uh, the kick return, but we had a block hunt, and we had some big plays, block field goals, so obviously it makes a big difference in the game. All right. Thanks, Coach Gullick, in the second half. Those block kicks have made a big difference today. A blocked punt, a blocked field goal, a blocked extra point. All on the ledger today for Mike Gundy's Oklahoma State Cowboys. And this is their home opener. They've won every one since 1996. They're trying to make it 19 straight today. Dax Garman hit Brandon Shepard with an 87-yard touchdown pass. Part of a 27-6 halftime lead on Fox College Football. Entertaining first half at Boone Pickens Stadium in Stillwater. At the half, Oklahoma State 27, Missouri State 6. This is Fox College Football, Mark Falwell, Brian Baldinger. And we saw an entertaining and uh, a very strange at times first half with some of the plays on special teams and quarterback-wise. Well, we know the special teams are a third of the game, and it played a big part in, in some of the field position in this game and the way this game kind of swung uh, throughout the first half because Missouri State did not play poorly. They played poorly on special teams and it affected the field position. 
And so I think that was a big story of this game in the first half, Mark. And it happens in the return game. It happens with kick blocks. And we'll see some of the highlights right now, Brian. Well, I mean, this is Tyreek Hill. I mean, this is the one big play that he had. The speedster, 37-yard punt return. Set up good field position for the Cowboys. But you're going to see just a, a poorly protected punt. That one blocked and then returned uh, for good field position. This extra point was blocked. Even when they got a touchdown, they only got six points. This is a bad snap right here. Did everything they could just to get this ball off. This field goal was blocked. You know, and so then, look, J.W. Walsh did what he likes to do. He went down on this tackle here early in the first quarter. He would never get up and play again. We saw him on crutches, but he was replaced by Dax Garman, who came in and took this 87-yard touchdown throw to Brandon Shepard. Oklahoma State ended up pulling away here in the second quarter because of the arm of Dax Garman. The CC's Pizza key stats show that Oklahoma State has outgained Missouri State 280 to 165 with the edge in both passing and rushing. Time of possession favoring Oklahoma State with 1636. And they have converted all four times to the red zone. And how about that three for blocked kicks? You never see that. I mean, a halftime stat, I mean, that's an Oklahoma State record in a game three and first in, in, in one half of play. And that certainly took points off the board from Missouri State and certainly gave the Cowboys good field position. Even though they didn't have good field position, they're able to find a way to score here on the beautiful across the body flow, uh, throw that is Dax Garman to Brandon Shepard, 87 yards on that pass play. And it's got Oklahoma State up 27-6 over Missouri State here on Fox College Football. Fox College football, the third quarter is about to start in Stillwater. Oklahoma State 27, Missouri State 6, as we get a report from Leslie McCaslin. Leslie? Well, guys, I talked to Missouri State's head coach, Terry Allen, who told me, we did this last week. We were down by 17 points, and we came back to win that game. And basically what he told us, guys, is we just have to build on that. Then we feel okay about the first half. We moved the ball, but we just had some miscues on special teams. So definitely talking up a comeback with his guys. He said we were clean with the football. Just those couple of miscues. We just have to stay with some of the things we were doing in the first half. There's the bio on Terry Allen, who, in addition to coaching for now nine seasons at Missouri State, also coached at Kansas for five years and at Northern Iowa, where he coached Kurt Warner yep. and went to the FCS playoffs in seven out of eight seasons. Yeah, coached uh, the great Kurt Warner. Actually, one of his coaches went to Green Bay uh, from Northern Iowa, went on Lindy and Fonte's staff, and that helped get Kurt Warner to Green Bay where he was cut. Brett Favre, of course, was there at that time, but went back, stocked some shelves in Iowa, and yeah. the Arena League came, and NFL Europe came, and pretty soon, you know, the Super Bowl MVP came. An injury to Trent Green. Yep. It's all about being ready to seize well, an opportunity. Well, it is about seizing an opportunity. We've seen that already today with yep. the injury to J.W. Walsh and Dax Garman, who hasn't played in five years, comes in, flips the ball around pretty good. Kind of making a name for himself, just probably enjoying getting on the field and throwing the ball for the first time in a long time. He won't be getting on the field here to begin the third quarter. It's Oklahoma State kicking off. Missouri State won the toss at the beginning of today's game, but deferred their option to the second half. There's Kip Smith, who transferred to Oklahoma State from UCLA. Caught and down to the end zone by LaMarcus Stewart. So Kiara Thomas uh, brings the Bears onto the field. And he played a mistake-free first half. I, they probably should have had another touchdown on the board. He had gotten the ball to Julian Burton in the first quarter behind the Cowboys. Burton dropped it. But uh, Harris done a good job of avoiding the rush, kind of throwing the ball away, a little conservative play, but didn't want to make any mistakes in his part of the field. 109 yards through the air for the senior, Kiara Harris. Leading rusher for Missouri State is Kalen Crowder, redshirt freshman from nearby Bartlesville, Oklahoma. On the touchback of the 25. Off the left side for a short gain, Phoenix Johnson. Phoenix Johnson gets the start here of the third quarter. Ryan Heaston started the game. We saw Kalen Crowder. A couple of big runs in that first half for the Bears. And Johnson stays in. He's carried it more than anyone today for Missouri State. That was his seventh rush. But it only picked up two. 
like Kiara Harris has changed the play right now. Communication with Robert Booker, the center. Julian Burton caught. Trying to maneuver up for a first down, but kept two yards short by Larry Stevens. Stevens, a senior from Houston, who was injured in the opener last year towards ACL against Mississippi State. Now getting a chance to play. That'd be a start. Jordan Stearns and Larry Stevens in safety, having to play stage one low and Shamil Gary. So far in six quarters of football, Oklahoma State on third down. They've gotten off the field 15 out of 20 times. We'll see what they do here. This is third and short. Harris able to get a throw away, but he loops it over Sinclair, and even at 6-7. Cannon Sinclair had no chance. Well, that's because James Castleman was right in the lap of Kiara Harris that time. We've seen Castleman block a kick here today. And you now just a senior from Amarillo who's a tremendous three-sport athlete in high school, and he shows that athletic ability from the defense line position. As you noted earlier, the leading scorer and rebounder in basketball at Amarillo High. Yeah, you got to imagine that a couple athletes have come through there over the history. Punt for Chris Sullins. Brandon Shepard is blasted. We may have a targeting penalty here. There is a big hit after Shepard caught the ball and had a very short return. Dylan Cole timed it perfectly, I thought. I mean, the flags came out immediately. He's questioning it. It was what they call a bang-bang play by Cole, who has been all over the field today. The hit was so quick, and as you said, a bang-bang play, so quick and so violent. I mean, he instantly split Shepard around. The foul is targeting. Number 31 is disqualified. The previous play is under further review. As all targeting fouls are, they are immediately reviewed to determine if the call will stand or not. One change in the rules this year is that the marker last year was not picked up. The 15 yards was still counted even if the targeting penalty was overturned. Well, look, Dylan Cole was on, he, he was a, it's not a bad call. It, it just isn't. I mean, it's the first targeting call I've seen in two years in college football in a game that I have done. It's not called very often. Uh, they can pick up the flag if they feel like that was helmet to helmet, though, and he's leading with the crown of his helmet. Uh, his eyes were down. We're trying to get the heads up in football and lead more with the, the top of the head more than the crown. And remember, Brian, that when you're disqualified for targeting yeah, in the you're second out. half, you're, you're out, next out week. for the first half of next week's game, which is Missouri State's home opener at the renovated Plaster Stadium in Springfield, Missouri, against North Dakota. I know this. I know it's not intentional by Dylan Cole to be a, a human missile and just target uh, Brandon Shepard on that play. After review, Number 31 is not disqualified. There is no foul on the play. First and 10. Dylan Cole, who's been the best player on defense today for Missouri State, does not see his afternoon end prematurely. I think they, I mean, it was helmet to helmet. No, he went right after the head of Brandon Shepard. I, I mean, I kind of think that's what the call is supposed to eliminate, those type of plays, but I know I Dylan Cole's care. happy to still be in there. A bit confused by that one. Childs picked up one block, but Missouri State with heat on Dax Garmin, and down he goes with a loss of a yard on first down. Like safety is an issue. We'll just go back to that uh, hit by Dylan Cole, and we're trying to eliminate those type of plays from every level of football. I, I thought that's what targeting was supposed to be. I'm sure that uh, Walt Anderson, who heads up these uh, Big 12 officials, will have a little conference this week about that. Second down and 11 now. Sweeping Tyreek Hill, trying to get him out of space. They do. He's got a lot of space. 50, 40, and he's brought down a touchdown saving tackle by linebacker Jeremy Springer. European 
Canadian sports car that just hit <laughs> that just hit the sixth gear. He, for a guy as fast as he is, he you know he's only five foot ten. He doesn't have this big long Usain Bolt stride that we saw the Jamaican you know sprinter win the Olympics with, but he can pick him up and put him down as quick as anybody I've seen. 44 yards on the run for Tyree Kill. An inside handoff. Ready Childs, short gain, Andrew Beisel the tackle. Well, here he is. I mean, he's just going to outrun. He's, he gets a nice lead block by Ready Childs there. All he needs is a stiff arm at the end. He doesn't quite get that, but uh, biggest play of his career at Oklahoma State. Tyree Kill ran the second fastest 200 meters ever for a high schooler in the U.S. Play action. Throw over the middle. Broken up. Caught. Touchdown. It was deflected and still Javon Seals pulled it in. Great concentration because the safety, Mike Crutcher, got a hand on it. Seals stayed with it. Seals, who had, there he is. Just going to run a straight post route here. Gets inside right now. Kind of a skinny post. Gets past Crutcher. Crutcher does a good job of finding it. You only need to get one foot in bounds here in college football, and Seals does. And Farmer with another touchdown throw. He had an 87-yarder earlier today to Brandon Shepard, the second longest completion in Oklahoma State history. That one is 21 yards to Jawan Seals. The sophomore from Port Arthur, even off the deflection by safety Mike Crutcher, Seals pulls it in, and Oklahoma State's up 34-6. Well, he's been firing the pistols a lot today as Oklahoma State's up 34-6. Extending the lead just a moment ago on the OG&E play of the game. Well, great concentration by Juwan Seals. He gets behind the safety right now. Crutcher, his eyes are on the ball. Crutcher gets his hand on it, stays with it. Basic tip drill right there. And Seals right here helping to replace the loss of a fine player like Josh Stewart last year. We're seeing kind of these young players, Seals and Shepard specifically today, really step up and take the place of guys like Stewart. Charlie Moore and Tracy Moore. Yeah. Big part of the passing game last year. Line drive kick. Kip Smith at the goal line. Return for Burton. Fighting forward after the initial contact. He'll make his way out to the 25. Oklahoma State has scored on six of eight possessions today. They've had a couple of missed field goals for Ben Grogan. Kip Smith punted one time, but the punt was wiped out because of a roughing the kicker penalty on Missouri State. And now the Bears from the Missouri Valley Football Conference, 1 and 29 all time against FBS competition. They take the field at their own 25. Well, the paddle club is ready. I mean, they don't care if it's 34 to 6. They're enjoying their day out there. But you, always, you always have to be ready. Did you to count make all noise. the paddles today? You counted, uh, 120 you? approximately. That's that's good diligent work by you. Thank you. Thank you. Harris will turn. Fake the handoff. And able to toe tap on the sideline. That's a nice catch. That's Zach second, yeah, and that's the second time we've seen uh, Harris bootleg. Once to the left, now once to the right, and completed both passes. I yep. mean, he, he runs well, he throws on the run well, and I think it slows down the rush of Oklahoma State a little bit. 12 yards to Zach Hoover. Two grabs today for Hoover, who caught only four passes all of last season. Harris keeping zone read. 42-yard line, gain of five. Watching uh, Kiara Harrison talking to him before the game. Of course, he went to Texarkana, Arkansas. They played the cross-state rivals, Texarkana, Texas, last night. They did. In a high school match. First time they beat him in a decade. He, he found that out. He said they're still celebrating in Texarkana about that uh, upset win. And it was a special game last night yeah. in the history of the rivalry because it was the 100th matchup between Texarkana, Arkansas High, and Texas High. And when, when it's a 100th matchup, that's that's a robbery. Yeah, game. That, it's going to be a robbery. commemorative program, no commemorative doubt. coin. Oh, he said he, his phone was lighting up, he said, last night. They had not won Texarkana, Arkansas High since 2000. Well, pressure here for Harris, hitting down. Down he goes. 
Sam Wren, who two years ago in junior college at Arizona Western had 14 and a half sacks, and he sacks Kiara Harris. Well, Wren is 89 in your picture right here. He beats the back, uh, beat uh, Crowder on that play. And really, Harris was counting on Crowder to make this block right here. Look kind of unusual fall right there. Trying to protect that ball. Good job of hanging on to it. Well, you still hear the thunder of the paddle people. It's not the thunder of the storms that moved through here overnight and this morning. Harris just going to have to eat it. Will push forward for a short gain, but probably about seven yards short of what they need for the first down. Larry Stevens with the tackle, but there were a lot of orange shirts providing pressure. Well, there was, and Harris broke the initial pocket, climbed it, and he got outside, but nobody came back to help him out. That's when a play breaks down. You've got to have a scramble drill. Somebody's got to come back to the ball. Harris was waiting for somebody to come back. Nobody did, and he had to eat it at the end. Tyreek Hill is back to return. Chris Sullins. Perfect snap right to him. High kick angling to the sideline. Bounces and rolls. Killed at the 16-yard line, and we will see more of Tyree Kill. We'll see him on the track, and we'll see him against Florida State. Tyree Kill for Oklahoma State in just a second game for the Cowboys. Stick around for more highlights of the young speedster as Oklahoma State leads 34-6. Fox College football is brought to you by Oklahoma Farm Bureau. We are the same Oklahoma Farm Bureau you've always trusted. Now even better. By Bank of Oklahoma, long live your money, member FDIC. And by OK Career Tech, creating a job for every Oklahoman and a workforce for every company. Visit okcareertech.org. 909, third quarter, 34-6, Oklahoma State over Missouri State. Terry Allen just saw the long snapper on the last punt. Colby Wickwar assessed an unsportsmanlike conduct, dead ball foul, that's improved the Cowboys' field position after the punt to their own 41. Dax Garman came on when J.W. Walsh was injured in the first half. He's played the rest of the game at quarterback. Here's an end around, bobbled. Hill was handing the ball off. There is room to run here at the 50. And down at the 40-yard line. Oklahoma State with a little razzle-dazzle on the reverse. Yeah, that's just a single reverse here. But certainly a big play ensued, and that's part of the speed that they possess. That's James Washington coming right to left on that play. True freshman from West Texas, Stamford, Texas. Ran for 20 yards. Quick throw Garmin. And it's caught. Stepping along the sidelines is Rashad Samples from Dallas Skyline High School. That's another redshirt freshman. A lot of young guys. I mean, this is a great offense if you're young, young and want to play and get your hands on the football to play in. Samples got his hands on that one for five yards. Now flush from the pocket. Christian Hoffman has one sack today. Could not bring down Dax Garmin, and Garmin is running. Running for a first down and running out of bounds. Bumped at the Missouri State 20 yard line by Matt Rush. Yeah, the only thing about that play is Garmin doesn't need to take that hit at the end. Already lost one receiver. He's thrown the flag saying a late hit, but. Garmin scrambles for 14 yards. He's thrown for 199 today. Trying to get a player off the field. There's too many players out there. Washington, who ran the ball on the reverse earlier. He's the player that was trying to scramble off the field. Substitution infraction, offense five-yard penalty, first down. Well, here's Dax Garmin getting out here right now. Really not known to be able to, you know, like a J.W. Walsh to really run for yards, but that, that hit right there is unnecessary for him to take. Just step out well before, you know, the opposition gets a chance to lay his shoulder into him. You'll learn. Tight ends on first and 15. Hand off Hill. Hill. You can hear the pads popping. Hill's not afraid to get tangled up into some contact, Brian, and he, well, he fights forward to the 20. I mean, he's got world-class, true world-class speed. 
But he's also built really well. I mean, he's got bowling balls for shoulders, built big up top. He can kind of deliver a, a blow and also take one. Gains the lost yardage due to the penalty back and another yard, so second and nine. Midway through the third quarter. The lay hand off Hill. Just, just talking to Mike Gundy about the recruitment of Tyreek Hill. He said he was a hard guy to get a hold of. You know, he was in junior college, Garden City Community College in Kansas, and they thought they had him. Then they thought they lost him to Texas and a couple of other schools, and then he called him up and said, hey, give me that paper. I want to sign it. I'm coming. Ran on the track team last spring and did very well. Here's Gorman under pressure. Stepped out of two would-be tackles, and then air mails it through the back of the end zone. One of the James areas that, on Mark, one of the areas Tyreek Hill has to get better at is just that pass protection. He was in protection that time and didn't really do a good job of taking off the blocker coming on the outside. He went to cut him, and really, you cut him like that at 185 pounds, they kind of run right over you. Better off just button him, you know, right between the numbers and stoning him there and stopping the, the forward progress. And that defender he was trying to take on, James Barnes, had a touchdown on a fumble recovery on the last play of the game last week. Ben Grogan, a field goal, has missed two long ones, but made three, 37-19, and that one from 34 yards out to make it 37-6. Don't miss Fox Sports Live as the crew brings you the latest news and highlights from the full day at Major League Baseball, the NBA, and the NHL. Watch Fox Sports Live nightly on Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Seven play 42 yard drive led to Ben Brogan's third field goal of the day. From 34 yards, made it 37 6. Third quarter, 6.51 remaining in the home opener 2014 at Boone Pickett Stadium. Fielded at the one, Lamarcus Stewart, number one. Oof. Wow. Belted at the 25-yard line. Big hit on special teams as we get a game break now from our Fox College Football Studio and Greg Wolf. All right, guys, thank you very much. An early top 10 battle still to come. Number seven, Michigan State takes on number three, Oregon, and Heisman hopeful Marcus Mariota back for his junior season. You can see it at 6.30 Eastern on Fox. Back to you. Yeah, Gus Johnson, Charles Davis, and yeah. Eugene, Oregon. I was... Uh, Always fun. Yeah. Not many days like this in Eugene, Oregon, where the sunshine is out after two and a half inches of rain last night. You play in the Big 12, you can, you can get any weather pattern. <laughs> you know, from South Texas all the way to the plains of Iowa. Phoenix Johnson, a handoff for Missouri State. The offense has sputtered yeah. with a loss of a yard here and two third quarter possessions have been three and out. They seem to just be attacking off the edges right now and firming things up in the middle, and they're not getting any of those splits inside in the run game that they had gotten in the first half. Seemed like it was kind of just a structural change at halftime here. They haven't given up a good run in the second half. Sam Wren has one sack. Harris able to elude him. Harris has to tuck it under and run and sprints to the sideline and has a first down before Derek Robertson, a sophomore safety from Colleen, Texas, forced him out. Yeah, Harris does a nice job of escaping the pressure. Just a straight four-man rush right now. But he's trying to keep his eyes up, and now he sees, now he's tucking it away. He switches it to the other hand, which is fundamentally sound, protecting it from the defense. 13-yard run for Harris is the ninth Missouri State first down today. Short game for Phoenix Johnson on the run with Trace Clark bringing him to the turf. Trace Clark is, uh, you know, one of those guys that they're counting on here this year. He's got his brothers playing for Oregon later today, right here on Fox. But uh, family of players as Terry Allen looks on. Terry Allen in his ninth season at Missouri State. They went five and seven last year. They've had two winning seasons in his time there. Oklahoma State, of course, 10 and three last season. And a run here by Harris and ran out of the tackle and runs for a first down. 
into Oklahoma State territory. Markers down on the near side of the field. Well, Malik Earl, the freshman, uh, might have been guilty of an infraction, the wide receiver. It had nothing to do with the run by Harris. And they negate an 18-yard yeah. run for Kiara Harris. We shall see with 5.04 remaining in the third quarter. Personal foul, defense, number 22. 15 yards will be added on. First down. I just saw the end of it. It was Juwan Frey. The freshman. corner out there, the freshman, going after Malik Earl, away from the ball. Mike Gundy won't like that play at all. The unfortunate thing today, if you're a player that is called for a penalty, there's never, there's never any doubt because Randy Crystal is so perfect. Crystal is so perfect on his enunciation. Yes. You know, there's no confusing number 22, no. 32. It's, he enunciates very well. Nicely done. The penalty yardage moves it down to the 27. Hurst. Now a reverse being run, and Burton will throw, and it is caught by tight end Adam St. Peter at the 19-yard line of the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Well, that's with the old-fashioned razzle-dazzle. I mean, I didn't know Julian Burton could throw the football, but, you know, any play that's in the playbook right now, a um, little reverse pass. Nice job by Burton just... You know, locate the open receiver right there. Exactly how you draw that one up. Gain of eight yards. As St. Peter, the sophomore from Joplin, catches from wide receiver Julian Burton. The 19. Phoenix Johnson trying to pick his spots and upended by Kevin Peterson at corner. Along with Ryan Simmons at middle linebacker. Reedy Johnson hasn't found any room inside front. That man, Ryan Simmons, took his in steam a little bit. That'll get the paddles pounding. Simmons. Pace to be a good season here. Fourth down. Huh? Third and short, third short. And a rarity. Harris under center, and that's why, because he just wants to carve out some space behind his center and left guard for quarterback sneak at a first down. Robert Booker is the, the all-conference center. Preseason first yeah. team All-American in FCS. Yeah. Had a little bit of a hip injury. Been slowing him down a little bit, but you wouldn't know it here today. 320 pounds. I mean, that's some size on him. And a first down just inside the 17. Booker was a third-team All-American in FCS last year, starting every game, anchoring the middle of the line for the Missouri State Bears. Now, Kiara Harris doesn't like something. Call a timeout. Timeout. Taken with just over three minutes left in the third quarter. Oklahoma State up big. Boone Pickens Stadium, Oklahoma State 37, Missouri State 6. Let's go, Cowboys. 3-0-4 remaining in the third quarter. Missouri State just took a timeout after they converted on third down and short. Motion, fake handle. Harris knifing through the middle of the line from the 17 down near the 12. You know, last week here, Harris ran for it. 11 times for 66 yards. A lot of runs just like that, where he fakes that underneath handoff on the fly sweep and then just kind of lets his offensive line get a hat on a hat and then just finds a little crease. And that's one way that they were able to get their running game charged up last week. Missouri State on their longest drive today. Nine plays. Again, they fake that fly sweep and they throw it to Caleb Crowder, who they faked it to, and he's fighting for the end zone, and he's stopped just shy of the goal line by Derek Robertson. That's a nice play. Fake the underneath handoff out there, let him keep going. And then Crowder trying to finish here. See what this collision looks like at the goal line. <laughs> Talk about trying to defend your goal line here. This is one way to do it. Man. Helmet to helmet. Yeah, again. That time, Derek Robertson with that hit. Missouri State on first and goal. They're on the lip of the cup. Sinclair, the tight end. Harris is directing him. Crowder over the right side. 
second effort has put him into the end zone for Missouri State late in the third quarter. Has to, feel nice. has to feel nice for a young man from up in Bartlesville just up the road, Brian. No doubt about it. You know, they had a couple kids from Oklahoma here. Again, just good, tough runner. Never, never kept the, never stopped the legs. Good second effort that time. You may be able to hear them chanting <laughs> block that kick. It's happened a lot today. But this time, they successfully convert. Badani's had a PAT and a field goal block today, but that one is good. 37-13. Well, this is just straight pistol formation here. So Crowder right here runs off the right side behind Gal Beers. And Blenar right there. Little power football. Meets uh, the middle linebacker Ryan Simmons in the hole and wins that uh, what they used to call the old Oklahoma drill. Just man on man inside. Crowder, just a redshirt freshman. They'll be counting on him this season as they get start to begin their uh, conference play in a few weeks. Missouri Valley. And one of the tougher conferences that people don't talk about in this country at the FCS level. The conference opener will be October the 4th, as a matter of fact, at home against Youngstown State. Yeah, that conference has won five uh, games against FBS competition. Most recently, last week, North Dakota State just going into Ames, Iowa, and just thumping them. The same Iowa State Cyclones who almost beat Kansas State yeah. today. Yeah. They say it had a rally in the fourth quarter in the first Big 12 game of the season. By the way, North Dakota State and Missouri State will be playing in November in Springfield, November the 15th. And North Dakota State's driving for four straight FCS titles. Short pop-up kick fielded at the 29-yard line for Oklahoma State. Running out beyond the 40, Teddy Johnson. Well, we don't see the speed of Tyreek Hill on the kick return, but we can see it here in his first athletic action for Oklahoma State in Ames, Iowa at the Big 12 Indoor Championships. Now, in the 200, Brian, you've got to be able to handle the turn. Yeah. And Tyreek Hill handles the turn to the tune of winning the Big 12 200 meters. Well, he won the 200 meters. He came in second in the 60, and Oklahoma State, as a result, Won their first ever Big 12 uh, track, champ, track and field championship. And here are the cold hard facts brought to you today by Frost Brute Coors Light. Some other notable college football players in their times in the 200 meters. Jacoby Ford, C.J. Spiller. Tyree killed better than all of them. C.J. Spiller getting the start for the Buffalo Bills tomorrow. Brady Childs, who has two touchdown runs today, takes the first down handoff and a short pickup of a yard. Look at those times again to give you some perspective. Tyreek yeah. Hill, 20.14 in his personal best in the 200. Well, I mean, Chris Johnson still has the fastest time in the history of the combine. The NFL combine running a 4-2-4-40, and he beats him in that, in that race, that 200-meter race. Long count for Dax Gorman. Dropping back. Delivers the ball out of the left and incomplete for David Glidden. Third down coming up and more on Tyreek Hill from Leslie McCaskill. Well, guys, I talked to his sprints coach here at Oklahoma State this week, Diego Flacker, and he said Tyreek is one of the fastest kids he's ever worked with. He said the difference is not only does he have a button he can push that takes his speed to a whole nother level, he also said he can hold that max velocity longer than most. So in track, that's what makes him so good in the 200 meter, and of course in football, it's what makes him such a threat in the open field. Garmin throws over the middle for the first down. Nice catch for Austin Hayes, his first grab of the day. Yeah, he, he threw it right in the lo right location, low off his shoestrings right there, away from the defender. 41-yard line of Missouri State, now out to the left to Rashad Samples, trying to get the receivers to make some blocks for him, and thrown out of bounds near the 37. You know, Tyree kills time, his personal best. Mm -hmm. 20.14 seconds. To yep. give everyone some perspective, that's 95 hundredths of a second. Less than one second off Usain Bolt's world record of 1919. There you go. I mean, I just would like to know what that's like to feel. Just once. Yeah, just I just want to see how blurry everything is when you run that fast. Crank up the treadmill to about 22. <laughs> Dax Garman throws, and that was caught at the 
22. And then C.J. Curry slung down out of bounds. C.J. and his brother Darius play for Oklahoma State. Brian, they're from Flowery Ranch, yeah. Georgia. That's the a nice of, place to be. From. That's the the home of the Atlanta Falcons. It sounds like a nice place to be. It from is with that name anyway. I've, I've been to Flowery Branch High School with the Falcons. You know, calling a like a, a scrimmage under the lights. But this Dax Garmin here is um, showing you every kind of throw right now. Stick throw, throw with touch, deep ball throw, the hitch route, kind of the whole passing tree right now. His next throw may have to wait, though, until the fourth quarter. Okay. That's the end of the third. Dax Garmin's debut has seen Oklahoma State build a 37-13 lead after three. Pickens Stadium in Stillwater, Oklahoma. It's the 2014 home opener for Oklahoma State against Missouri State from the FCS. 37-13 is the lead as the first play of the fourth quarter is Dax Garman, who's been in since 234 left in the first, rolling and throwing, and short hops Austin Hayes with Dylan Cole providing a lot of pressure defensively for the Bears. Dylan Cole all over the field and forces that bad throw as we look at uh, the first three quarters here. Mercy Health second half game summer I mean that that's impressive there I mean in the red zone here Oklahoma State five for five here today they finished their drives and that'll please Mike Gundy in this game Dax Garman saw 433 yards of offense for the Cowboys Dax Garman's thrown for 236 he's 13 of 21 with that incompletion now third down and long Marker's down Rolling in zone over Rashad Samples, and the penalty is in the neighborhood of what you would suspect. Is going to be. Offense number 60. The penalties decline. Fourth down. So last week going into Florida State, I mean, Florida State, I mean, uh, Oklahoma State played so many new players, and Grabtree was one of them, making his first college start. So this is only his second game, and Zach Beach at right guard, and Lewis, heck, his. The guy he was counting on at center is in law school right now. Yes. No, so Paul Lewis is in there for uh, Jake Jenkins, who they thought might come back and play another year. The guy's kind of getting on the job training right now. 36 yard attempt here for Ben Brogan. Fight! Fight! Brogan looking for his fourth made field goal today and sneaks it inside the left upright. 40 to 13 is the lead for Oklahoma State after Grogan's fourth field goal. Fox College football is brought to you by OG&E, power at the speed of life. By Academy Sports and Outdoors, right stuff, low price every day. And by your local Ford dealer, the Ford Summer Spectacular Sales Event. Now playing at a Ford dealer near you. Oklahoma State's extended their lead to 40 to 13. With Ben Grogan now four of six today on field goals. He uh, kicked four field goals last year against Kansas State. Makes you forget about those uh, 50 plus yarders he attempted early in the game. And missed a 51 yarder. Julian Burton hmm. opting to down it two yards deep as we get a Fox College football game break from Greg Wolf. All right, guys, UW in a tight one and glad to have Siler Miles back. He was suspended for the season opener, gets his second rushing touchdown of the day, and UW back on top of Eastern Washington, 52-45 in the fourth. Guys, back to you. Eastern Washington played in the first game of the season. Played Sam Houston State out of the Southlake Conference two weeks ago. Hmm. From the FCS, Missouri State, yep. Missouri Valley Football Conference. They take the field here at the 25 after the touchback. 40 to 13. They've had their moments today. Of good play, but they've also had some real miscues in the kicking game that have cost them. Handing the ball off, Phoenix Johnson from Pierre Harris plunges over the 30 for a gain of seven to the 32. 
Jossie Akem with a tackle. Another freshman. Good little trap block inside right here by the tight end. Again, it's Sinclair. What they call just a wham block. Johnson on the handoff, stopped short of the first down. Seth Jacobs, a sophomore. There are 32 underclassmen on Oklahoma State's opening of the season two deep last week and this week. So that's the most in the country. Yeah. We just noted another one of the sophomores, Seth I, Jacobs. I think as the playoff of college football approaches and is honest here in this first year that teams have got to start scheduling tougher opponents here before the conference games if you really want to qualify. Run by Kiara Harris on the right side. Nobody's going to, I mean, everybody's, we talked to Mike Gundy about playing Florida State. He would rather not play Florida State in right. the first week of the season. He'd rather have a chance to be 2-0 and out of the blocks, getting ready for uh, what they're doing, you know, getting ready for their conference play. By percentage, Oklahoma State has the fewest returning lettermen this year, 54% of their roster. Yeah, Mike knew that, uh, he was going to be challenged early this year. He wasn't sure what he had. Fans wasn't weren't sure what they had. And then after that performance last Saturday night, fans started going, wait a second. We might be pretty good this year. Oklahoma State knocking on the door of the top 25. Just two spots out in the Associated Press and one spot out in the coaches poll as a run here off the right side for Johnson ends on the tackle of Demarcus Sherrod. Well, regardless of how this fourth quarter turns out, I think when Missouri State returns for their home opener next week in Springfield, I, I think they're going to feel pretty good about uh, going to Plaster Field there and the upgrades and improvements that they've made is renovated and an ex yeah. ex ex capacity from 16-3 to 17,500. Play fake and a bullet throw. Malik Earl was the intended receiver. Low pass from Kiara Harris incomplete. Malik Earl right from Oklahoma City here. And he's slow to get up. Big receiver. Over 6'3", over 200 pounds. Just kind of fell awkwardly going for that ball. Played at Edmond. Let's take a look here and see if Anything about this throw from Kiara Harris. Try to scoop that up underneath and wasn't touched by anybody. Hopefully nothing more than maybe just getting the wind knocked out of himself the way he fell. Jerry Allen, he liked uh, this young receiving core that he has to work with. Malik Earl being one of them. Zach Hoover, just a sophomore from Grand Valley, Missouri. One of those players, Julian Burton, we've seen score a touchdown today. And by the way, Burton has caught the four passes that he needs yeah. today, Brian, to reach 100 receptions 100. in his career at Missouri State. That's a milestone. One thing that we'll see from Missouri State going forward is they'll play at a much faster tempo when they get to their conference. I think they wanted to try and limit the number of touches that Oklahoma State has, just the tempo that they like to play with. They didn't want to turn this into a track meet today. And Malik Girl from Santa Fe High School here in Oklahoma City. Always love to come back to your hometown and be able to uh, lace them up and play a game probably in front of a lot of family and friends and probably quite a few players on Oklahoma State's team as well. Earl now walking toward the sideline with a third and seven coming up with 12 and a half minutes remaining. <laughs> Coach Allen looks like he's getting a little workout on the sidelines today. Their staff includes Rob Christoffel, mm -hmm. offensive coordinator, DJ Bokalik, yep. defensive, defensive coordinator. Sure. And the long walk to the sideline for Malik Earl. Now a chance for Missouri State to try to sustain the drive. Third down at seven. They need to get the ball to midfield from their own 43. And Harris is under pressure. Inside screen. The ball is caught. It's turned up the field by LaMarcus Stewart. But LaMarcus Stewart won't reach the first down as Ryan Simmons is there. Yeah. Well, they put everybody standing up for Oklahoma State's defensive line that time. And then a couple of them rushed. And then everybody else dropped back. And Simmons read the play perfectly. Going 
four here on fourth down. Two yards needed. Harris keeping. Harris was hit behind the line. But second effort, I do believe, has the first down for Kiara Harris. I think they're going to give him a good spot here. And yeah, they've already moved the chains. Right in the middle of the orange and black OSU here at Boone Pickens Stadium. I, I like what Kiara Harris has done here today. Showing a lot of toughness here. Running inside, putting his head down, taking the hit from the safety Trey Flowers. Harris at the 50, hands the ball off. Kalen Crowder running behind in the middle of the line into the teeth of the defensive line for Oklahoma State. Picks up a couple. Yeah, this is great for the offensive line and for really the control game that Missouri State would like to play with. I mean, going up against the Big 12, very talented defensive line. And getting some good work inside right there. Gal Beers, the right guard, getting some good work against quality players right now. Gal Beers, 24 starts in his career. Zach Cooley at left tackle today, making his 36th start. We noted Robert Booker is a preseason first-team All-American. On the left side, the pass from Harris goes to Julian Burton, and Burton runs by the defense, high-stepping down the sideline and forced out. But the big play near the Oklahoma State 20. Well, Burton had 140 receiving yards last week. He's having a nice game again here today, and he does have straight-line speed. Just a, just a hitch route on the outside. He goes right past the corner, Juwan O'Frey. Walks the tightrope, and look at this. The Bears in position right now to to score again on a long drive. 27-yard pass play, the fifth grab today for Burton, who has one of two Missouri State touchdowns on the afternoon. Now a big hole off the left side, wrestled down Crowder by Trey Flowers. Flowers is a redshirt freshman on the Oklahoma State two deep backing of Jordan Stearns at safety, so Converse Judson. 10-yard penalty, first down. A hold on Robert Booker. Not many penalties on this group up front, though, today against a, a really deep and talented defensive line of Oklahoma State. Nothing to feel ashamed about for Robert Booker or this group. You know, and the other thing that the Missouri State offense has not done today is turn the ball over. But they've made plays or have been unable to make plays on special teams, and the mistakes they've made on special teams have been similar, basically, to a turnover. Backed up here on the hold on the center, Booker. 31-yard line. Kalen Crowder on the inside handoff to the 25. Maybe the 26 of Oklahoma State. So I've seen all three of these backs run for Missouri State. I've seen Easton. I've seen Phoenix Johnson. But to me, Kalen Crowder, just two weeks in a row now, looks to be the best back that they have. Now, he's just a redshirt freshman from Oklahoma here, Bartlesville. But I, mean, I would see him moving up the depth chart, judging by this performance today. 62 yards last week, 42 yards today, leading among running backs for Missouri State. Airing it out. Oh, nice catch in the back corner of the end zone. That's a touchdown for Julian Burton, his second today. That's a nice throw by Harris. Second touchdown throw of the day, and Burton just got right behind the defense. Look at him. I mean, Harris feels pretty good about it. Dropped it right in the bucket, Brian. Sure did. Good this throw. is nice. Yeah. Beat the freshman Ramon Richards outside. Got behind him and good concentration. Nice drive again. 9.28 remaining as Bonani's extra point is good. Oklahoma State doubling up Missouri State with 9.28 left. 40 to 20. 26 yards. This is Julian Burton falling in a touchdown for the second time today to cap that 11 play drive for Kiara Harris and the Bears. Uh, Jay, I don't know about you, but I am spent. Catch every strikeout, every game ender, and every history making moment on MLB Whip Around. Weeknights at 10 Eastern on Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. The Missouri State Bears have put together a 10-play and then an 11-play touchdown drive, and they have drawn it within 40 to 20. Oklahoma State leads here in the fourth quarter. They're a pretty well-coached team when they don't make mistakes. You know, they don't beat themselves. They don't get kicks blocked. And, you know, I mean, this is two weeks in a row. They haven't laid the ball on the ground, haven't fumbled it away. 
They were a plus two in the turnovers last week against Northwestern State. There's a ball that goes all the way through the end zone. As we look at the Mercy Health second half game summary, late in the first quarter, J.W. Walsh left the game after injuring his right foot. And that opened the door, Brian, for Dax Garman to play for the first time since his junior year of high school. Here's a 87-yard touchdown pass to Brandon Shepard and then one to Jawan Seals in the second half. Well, I imagine that Dax Garman is having as much fun as he's had in the last five years. And oh, he's yeah. probably had a lot of a lot of dreams at night thinking about what it was going to feel like when he got on it, when he got his chance. And right now he's making the best of it. it goes to Austin Hayes. And Hayes with a collision along the sideline after the catch and run. I wonder, I, I really do wonder what was going through his mind mm. when he took the field probably earlier than he anticipated today. Well, you know, you never want to see it under the circumstances where there's an injury, but that's why there's backups. And uh, right now, I think he's making quite an impression upon the offensive coordinator, Mike Gundy, the head coach. Big hole on the handoff here on second down. And the ball carrier, Raymond Taylor, a transfer from Kansas State. Boy, what a run. Cutting to the right, then back to the left, all the way across the field, and wrestled down on his first Oklahoma State carry. Andrew Beisel, the tackle, but all the way to the 43 at Missouri State, running for 30 yards. Well, I'm sure Raymond Taylor has thought about his first run yeah. as a Cowboy, what that was going to be like. That's the best run of the afternoon by anybody. And he'll get another crack at it. And bounces off the line, and here he goes again. Raymond well, Taylor to the 38. Well, we know this. He doesn't go down easy, and he doesn't go down on first contact. Here's this first run of, Ray of the Raymond Taylor era. <laughs> It'll stop and start, put the Jake break on. Buys a little daylight, bounces to the outside, pretty nifty. They faked it to him, and Garmin, and there is a tight spiral right down the heart of the field, incomplete for Chris Lacey. Well, the deep passing game is in uh, from anywhere, on they can strike from anywhere on the field. The way this uh, Garmin can throw the football, that's a perfect throw. Perfect throw to Chris Lacey. Did you see anything in what he's done today that resembled rust for no. Dax Garmin? No, I mean, that's kind of the amazing thing. I think he's... Well, Mike Gunny will know better if he's made some mistakes, but like that throw, that throw is to the outside. He put it right on a tee. I mean, it's an accurate throw, so you can get something after the catch. And Austin Hayes did get something after the catch, but he came up two yards short of the first down. They stay on the field, go for it on fourth down. They get the right personnel on the field. Lacey's racing off the field. Fourth and two. Taylor's the running back. Two receivers and two tight ends. Going 12 personnel here on fourth down. And Raymond Taylor is hit in the backfield. Well, oh, that's that Dylan Cole again. Coming right off the edge. Along with Chris Hoffman. He's made so many big plays. And remember that Dylan Cole was almost kicked out of the game. There was a targeting call against him that was overturned early in the third quarter. They stop Oklahoma State on down. Fox College football seeing Oklahoma State over Missouri State 40 to 20 in the fourth <laughs> quarter. We'll head back to Texas coming up next down I-35 to Waco where Baylor in their second game at McLean Stadium will face Northwestern State. The 10th ranked Bears bring the color and excitement of Big 12 football to Fox. 7.30 Eastern, Northwestern State at Baylor on Fox Sports Networks. We'll wait to see if their uh, star young quarterback Bryce Petty is going to be able to go here today. Injured last week against SMU. It's pretty unlikely. Ooh. Here's a deep ball. There's a flag down. The pass is overthrown. Trying to go to Zach Hoover. But there are markers down on Kiara Harris's deep ball. Uh, you know, this Missouri State team isn't quitting. This game was 37 to 6. Yeah. Remember that it that last week they were down 24-7 to Northwestern State and ultimately scored 20 unanswered points mm -hmm. in the final 13 and a half minutes to win 34-27. Holding defense, number 18. 
The hold occurred on an eligible receiver. It'll be a 10-yard penalty and an automatic first down. All right, well, I mean, right here on the outside is Ramon Richards. He's the freshman. And he stumbles, and he stumbles, and he stumbled more than he held, but that's, uh, that led to it. So, beaten for a touchdown. I mean, this is growing pains for a freshman out of San Antonio. Five Oklahoma State penalties have been accepted for a total of 45 yards. Inside, not much running room for Crowder. There was Ryan Simmons. Again, later on on Fox Sports Networks, Bryce Petty will be out as 10th-ranked Baylor plays Northwestern State for the South of Conference. So, Seth Russell, we saw him last yeah. year. Brian will be making his first career start today as a sophomore. Well, just think about it, the last uh, four years, the quarterbacks. I mean, RG3 to Nick Florence to Bryce Petty. Seems everybody that Art Bryles puts out there looks prepared and ready to run that uh, high-octane offense. Last week, Baylor in the shutout over SMU had that injury sustained by Bryce Petty. This is Phoenix Johnson running here on second down. Ball goes over the 50 and into Oklahoma State territory. Down goes Johnson, just shy of the 45 of the Cowboys. Well, the Bears, I mean, there's no quit, right? And so they're third down. I mean, they're in four. Every single series here is just four downs. They, they won't punt or kick an extra uh, field goal or anything. And now a quick pass caught. Hoover ran away from a tackle attempt by Richards. And out of the 35, there are still some, there are some twos out there right now on the depth chart for Oklahoma State, but there are still some ones out there. We mentioned no. Ryan Simmons. Ryan Simmons, just a middle linebacker. Ago. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he's getting playing time for a lot of these kids, and a lot of these guys are going to be called upon in the Big 12 on any given Saturday afternoon or Thursday night. I mean, you got to defend sometimes 100 plays. You need some depth on your defense. Running Phoenix Johnson. The hole opens up off the right side. 20-yard line and out of bounds on the sideline at the 15. Richards again on a tackle. You know, if you're not catching the pass the way Zach Hoover did the play before, you got to be able to block. And I thought Hoover did a good job on the outside here, leading the way for Phoenix Johnson. He bounces this ball to the outside. He finds the hole behind his right hat uh, tackle, Blenar. Now he's digging here. He's looking to pick up a block right here for 15. Zach Hoover puts one on uh, Ramon Richards. Two extra yards. This piece of camera work. There. Johnson now running for the 17th time today. And that one snuffed out. Buried for a loss on the left side by Vincent Taylor. Redshirt freshman from San Antonio. Taylor swallows him up in the backfield for a loss of four. I'm surprised right now that I don't see Julian Burton even on the field for Missouri State. I mean, he's their star target. A lot of other players out there, not saying that LaMarcus Stewart can't do it, but we've seen Burton get behind this defense three times today. Biggest deficit Missouri, Missouri State faced today was 37 to 6. Harris is swallowed up. Big sack. Oklahoma State with Victor Iriconsi flexing after the sack. He got cut by the back here. He gets up. Watch this cut right block right here by Phoenix Johnson. He's going to cut him. This is what you do. You never stay. In fact, he never went to the ground. Just athletically landed on all fours to be able to take uh, Harris down. Good individual play. Real good. Try that in your backyard. Your brother takes your legs out from underneath you and you don't hit the ground. Eric Conci with a sack. James Bean has been able to, Jimmy Bean that is, has been able to reach the quarterback a couple of times today. This is third down to 21. A handoff back to the 20. But well short, they needed to be down to the five-yard line for a first down. I don't agree with this field goal attempt. I mean, if you're here, you might as well give it everything you got. Uh, this right now, even if you kick this field goal, make it 40-23. Still three scores. Still three scores. You don't stop that. That doesn't change. Tried today by Marcelo Bonani, but Bonani drives it through. It's 40 to 23 off the field goal by Missouri State. 20 of the last 23 points in the game have been scored by the Bears. Eric Conci had a sack, but Missouri State still kicks the field goal. 
Jerry Hirakansi had a sack on that drive. Missouri State stopped short, settled for a field goal. It's 40-23 to Oklahoma State as we look at today's earlier Whataburger. What a player of the game. Brandon Shepard from Dax Garmin, an 87-yard touchdown catch. Biggest play of the game, kind of broke it open. And you see the arm of Garmin. You see the speed of Shepard on the outside. Nice game here for young player out of St. Louis, Missouri. And Brandon Shepard, by the way, right now is back deep to receive the kick. And will run it out. He seemed too sure about that. Hesitated, made it to the 15. We should note, by the way, that the longest pass play in Oklahoma State history was 95 yards. Zach Robinson to Jeremy Broadway against Iowa State in 2008. The second longest pass play in Oklahoma State history was today's pitch and catch from Dax Garman to Brandon Shepard for 87. All right. Zach Robinson kind of right before the Brandon Whedon era here. Mm -hmm. All under the Mike Gundy era. His 10th season here at the helm of the Cowboys. And the 47-year-old from Midwest City, Oklahoma, about to record his 78th victory as head coach here at Oklahoma State. He'll head to that family farm of his after the game. Yes. Maybe bail a little hay. <laughs> Bermuda hay. Yeah, it's remember really good. He, he was telling us all about hay. He said, you know, if you get weeds in there, you know, like horses aren't going to eat that stuff. They don't digest it. No. You got to like really get it Bermuda hay, make it a little cleaner, tastier. Well, even a football coach needs something every once in a while to take his mind yeah, off football, it's right? Therapy. Brian? He said he puts his glasses on out there and goes and gets a little work done, trying to instill a little work ethic in his kids. He said his father did that. Grew up in the city, but it had an 80-acre farm that he worked on when he was young. Kind of learned uh, some of those traditional Midwest values working on that farm. And Oklahoma State's working to see out the game here with just under two and a half minutes remaining an inside handoff on second down it is stacked up by Andrew Beisel and the Missouri State defense the Missouri State as we noted will play North Dakota next week they've got a game against Central Arkansas later on in September on the road we saw Central Arkansas take Texas Tech to the limit last okay. week <laughs> you see this Oklahoma State's almost huddling like I you never see this they can't quite get everybody in the huddle a couple of receivers kind of hanging out they're like what is that we don't huddle it's like a half huddle. You saw the numbers there for Dax Garman on today's Texas Farm Bureau, Insur Farm Bureau Insurance All Access update. And now out of that huddle with the play clock down under five seconds. Running off the right side, Oklahoma State, Raymond Taylor, tugged down by the jersey about a half yard shy of a first down. Caleb Schafitzel. Schafitzel, the senior. A two-time yeah. All-American at the FCS level. Yeah. Missouri State. It's their second timeout. It's 30 seconds in length. 132 remaining on the timeout called here by Terry Allen and Missouri State. Now, we'll be back here next week, Brian, for the call of Oklahoma State and UTSA. UT San Antonio, the Roadrunners, took Arizona to the limit on Thursday night. Arizona escaped the Alamo Dome with a three-point victory. Last year, Oklahoma State won in San Antonio 56-35. It will be a big moment for Larry Coker, yep. who, of course, was on staff for a decade here back in the returning 70s and his, 80s. Returning to his home state. And yes, yes. Yeah, and it's the, it's the second of four straight home games here for Mike Gundy and the Cowboys. Got and they get bigger and bigger each and every week. They got a Thursday night against Texas Tech to open yeah. Big 12 play on September 25th. Yeah, and it's all straight, straight Big 12, beginning with Texas Tech. And... We'll see if J.W. Walsh can ditch those crutches and get back on his feet, get healthy, get back under center. If not, obviously the offense appears to be in very capable hands with the first action today in the collegiate career of Dax Garmin, and it has been very impressive. That is a rough-looking punt for Kip Smith. That's just concentration. He's better than that. 126 to go. Yeah, you know, the uh, Missouri State had called that timeout. They, they want to crack one more and see if they can get another score on the board before they get out of town. Well, they already have, what, 117 yards of offense here in the fourth quarter compared to 41 for Oklahoma State. Well, they got a short field, that's for sure. They get 
get the ball at Oklahoma State's 42-yard line. Yeah, just a 17-yard punt shanked by Kip oh, Smith. Here we go. Get the backup in here, Brody Lambert from Arlington Martin High School, who appeared at the end of one game last year as a redshirt freshman but did not report any statistics, that didn't pass, didn't run the ball. Well, that's what Terry Allen wanted. He wanted to get a young player a couple snaps here. And now he'll get a chance for his first pass in college, and it's an incompletion for Dion Holland. Brody Lambert out of talent-rich Arlington, Texas, where these, where the Cowboys were last Saturday night against the national champion Florida State Seminoles. Arlington to Arlington. Season kicked off there. The national championship of the playoff finishes there. Time in mid-January. The title game for the first college football playoff. Big hit on the catch. Justin Phillips, the one delivering said hit. Willis Chambers catching the pass. Approaching the final minute here for Oklahoma State and Missouri State. Have to watch the polls when they come out tomorrow. See where Oklahoma State might be. As we noted earlier, they were one spot out of the top 25 for the coaches and two spots out of the Associated Press top 25. So many top All 25 start. finishes Offense, for Mike Gundy. Five-yard penalty, third down. Last year, Oklahoma State, with a 10-3 record, ended up 17th in the final Associated Press poll and won 10-plus for the third time in four years. Tell you, a long list of uh, really successful coaches here. On 40 seconds. Jimmy Johnson, Les Miles, Mike Gundy in his 10th season here. Big time national program. There you go. Four top 25 finishes. One time in the top five. Eight bowl appearances. Second longest consecutive bowl streak in the Big 12 to Oklahoma. Penalties move Missouri State back here with 50 seconds remaining. Crowder running tough here at the end of the game. As he's done all day. Yeah, he has. I like him. Now running through the gauntlet. You can hear the pads popping up here. I, I think that this is going to help Missouri State as they start getting ready for conference play. Uh, you know, coming in here and battling pretty tough and not uh, succumbing to the atmosphere or the athletes or anything. I, mean, I think they... They gave it a really good effort. And that run by Kalen Crowder a moment ago ends up being the final play of today's game. Oklahoma State secures the victory. Their first in 2014. They're now 1-1. One and, one, and the Missouri State Bears are 1-1 one one as well with Mike Gundy and Terry Allen meeting in the center of the field after a 40-23 victory for Oklahoma State over Missouri State. Cowboys now have won 18 straight games against teams from FCS and are now 7-0 all-time against Missouri State. The average score of the previous six meetings was 42-10. Today's final, again, 40-23. One of the stories, of course, is uh, Brandon Shepard and the day that he had wide receiver catching passes, a lot of them from Dax Garman filling in for a banged-up J.W. Walsh. to 23 today's final as Mike Gundy's team picks up their first win of the season he's on the field right now with Leslie McCaslin Leslie well Mike what did you like about the way Dax Garman stepped up and stepped in today well obviously it was new for him and he made some plays uh, I wish he would have made some better throws at time but overall I thought he played pretty well for his first time you guys get your win you made some big plays on special teams early how important was that in just setting the tone well, there's no doubt we needed special teams. They had a good game plan. They played hard. We didn't really play very hard, in my opinion. We've got to get our boater running a little bit. Yeah, each week will be a challenge for us. We've got to get our players ready. Well, next week will be a challenge with UTSA coming in here. They had a big win at Houston and almost beat Arizona. What do you want the focus to be this week? Well, each week we have to start on Sunday and all the way till Friday. And, uh, you know, they played very well. They're a good football team. You know, they can play in our league. So it'll be a big challenge for us. All right. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Good luck next week. We'll bring Dax Garman on in here. Hey, Dax, how are you? Hey, how are you? 
Well, we got to know. I mean, you haven't played since 2009. When you saw JW go to the back, what was your reaction? Uh, just be ready because, uh, you know, we practice every day, and it's not like I haven't practiced uh, every day since then. I just, uh, you know, do everything I can to uh, provide what I need to do for our team and run the offense. The coach has said you'd be ready to play today, but how comfortable were you out there? Uh, I felt fine. You know, it's uh, we do it every day, and I've been in the system for a while now, and, you know, I got great blocks up front. My running backs, you know, they did a great job, and receivers catch the ball really well. If you have to be the guy next week against UTSA, what will be your focus this week, and what do you think you need to be better at? Uh, just preparing, uh, being, you know, uh, quicker, smarter, and uh, making better decisions, and uh, just, uh, you know, uh, getting the ball to the receivers and the running backs, letting those guys make all the plays. You get to breathe a little bit of a sigh of relief. Now your first game in a long time. I had to feel good. Yeah, it is. It, you know, it feels great to get back on the field and to uh, play and just be out there with all my teammates. So it's a great feeling. All right. Thanks, Doug. Good luck next week if we see you again. 200 and almost 50 yards, guys, through the air. A couple of touchdowns. Not bad for his first start since 09. Leslie has been a long and winding road from Texas to Arizona, back to the state of Oklahoma, and his debut today for the Cowboys. Dax Garman, Brandon Shepard, and the Cowboys defeat Missouri State 40-23. We'll be back in a moment with Fox College Football.